The loading screen music goes crazy. It's insane. Like when you open the game, this is what plays. Once you've started to save. Hi, Chip! Welcome in. Can we get some yo's? Finally able to watch your stream and have to work? Let's go! Did you get a new job? D don't say what it is if you don't want to share, but... Gotta work Saturday? Big L. I might have to get a job soon. I'm gonna talk about that before we start the game. There's a big piece in lore update. But we're glad to have you here today, Chip. Also, trigger warning today. Scary game. Here it comes! Next month, I'm getting my license so I can drive to your mom's house. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Congrats. Stop. That, those are my jokes. Only I can make those jokes. Hi, Kowobo. Welcome. In. <laughs> Sorry. The slash highly joking. I've never seen that, and that's hilarious. <laughs> I posted an IG reel. It's the same clip I posted on TikTok today, and it's your mom joke gone wrong. And it got 43 shares on Instagram. What What's going on with Instagram? I don't get it. I mean, it's a pretty good clip, honestly. I'm a great driver, though. I know how to drive, too, but not a car. Hey, yo! Instagram loves the moms. I mean, I always see MILF tagged. Not in- <laughs> Okay guys, I'll turn face come on in 10 seconds. I'll do it for the fans. Um, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, it almost didn't show. Okay, I'm gonna lower down the music a tad. Because I have big lore update. Guys. As you know, my sister got laid off three months ago. Back in July. It's been three months. And she still has yet to find a job. Big L. Peace I to L, my sister. Um, Our rental agreement ends in November. But, like, her unemployment just covers our expenses. So... It's kind of- we're kind of skirting the line of homelessness, is what I'm trying to say. This, it probably won't happen, but it's still like an underlying fear that she and I have. My sister might have a job opportunity lined up, but it's like a- it's like a big maybe. She still has to like do an interview, which I don't know. So, I did mention that last week I got offered a job through the um, hidden job market, you know. Just knowing people and stuff. So, I applied to said job last night. At like 10pm. It, Dude, it took me like an hour to write my cover letter. 
I would read it off, but it would leak so much. It's so good, I promise you. It's like the best thing I've ever written. So, I do know that they're conducting interviews right now, like in the next two weeks. So, if I get an interview, I'll do it. If I get a job offer, I might take it. Um, because like, I know the people within the company. I'm obviously not gonna leak. And I don't have a LinkedIn. Don't you fuckers find it. Frickers! <laughs> so, is it an office job? I'm not leaking anything. I'm not leaking anything. Um, all, all you gotta know is that it pays well, okay? It pays well. So, I'm just gonna give you a warning. Mom and dad are fighting. <laughs> so you might not see dad as much anymore. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so if Peason underscore 17 has to get a real job, um, I don't know what it would mean for streaming. Like, obviously this all depends on if my sister gets a good job or if my disability gets approved, but then it's like, even if I get disability, I'm only gonna get like 800 bucks maximum. So it's like, that's not livable either. So, it's a lot that I've- I can't necessarily make a decision, obviously, unless I get a job offer. But if that does happen, like, I obviously won't quit streaming. I'm not crossing my fingers, see, nothing is crossed, my toes are not crossed. But, it would mean I would stream less, because they only have full-time positions, like, I don't think I can do part-time with that specific type of work. Um... So I don't know. But if I make hella bank with said job, then I can afford a YouTube editor. So even if I stream less, you guys could get some like banger YouTube content. So th this is all hypothetical. Like hopefully this will all get figured out by like December. Um, Cause I have my um, SSI hearing or interview in November, like literally the last day in November. It's so annoying. Um, so yeah, that's the big update. I applied to the job. Um, so I might get a call back because I know the people there. <laughs> I love nepotism. But yeah, I'm just I'm just bracing you for the divorce. Okay? Um that's all. That's all. That's all I did yesterday because I had a meeting yesterday with my sister and then they were like, "Hey, you should work here. Smile." I wish I could edit. That'd be so much fun, dude. If we have any editors in the chat, um work on making shit build a portfolio and if i if i legitimately can afford to like hire an editor because that would cost maybe like one video a week that's max 10 hours of labor maximum it should not take you 10 hours to edit like a one hour raw footage okay because the rule of thumb for editing is to like get the basic trim it should no take no more than like three times the original video length and then to add after effects it should take one to five hours depending on how many after effects you add so maximum, a weekly YouTube edit takes 10 to 15 hours if you're really involved. So like, that would cost me to pay an editor 1000 to 1500 a month. And that's, th this is something like, I want to be very transparent about. If I ever hire, um, like anybody under me, like if I have like a entertainment LLC at some point. I would, I would obviously people pay people hourly because I think doing per commission or per job isn't fair. I'd rather pay people per hour. And then if I ever have like a revenue like stream through YouTube, then they would get like, like a rev split. I feel like that's totally fair. You know, because having company or employees own parts of the company like assets and profits makes them work harder. So if we have any editors in chat, VOD watchers too. Um, I know not many people can watch live, but if we have any editors, like, I know how to trim. Trimming is basic, but, like, I don't, I don't like doing After Effects. It's annoying as fuck. Freak! That's two. I'm gonna hit my daily cap of three, guys. But that, okay, keep in mind, I can only afford an editor if I get the really good job, so. Um, right now, I have two paths I can take. And all of them weigh on if my sister gets, like, a good job or not. I can either, um, she gets a good job, then she still supports me, then I can stream full-time still like I do now, and still have weekly YouTube and daily YouTube shorts. Or, my sister does not get a job, because she's a big L. <laughs> she's not home right now, she can't hear me. Um, 
she does not get a job, then piece of underscore 17 has to get a real job. But then, if I get this one job that I'm applying for, I would make bank. So then I can afford a YouTube editor, and then you guys can get banger YouTube content. So both paths are good no matter what. You'll still see mom and dad. Isn't disability also an option? Um, that's the path- well, if I work, then I can't get disability, because disability in the government's eyes, like, for financial compensation, it means like, oh, you're- you are disabled to agree in which you cannot, like, do your daily tasks, like, bathe yourself or walk around, or you cannot hold a- a traditional job. Like, that's the government's definition of disability, so, like, if I even got, like, a part-time job, or a- if I got a part-time job or a full-time job that paid, like, adequately, then I would lose my disability benefits. Because then I'd have a real job and I would be able to work. Because I would literally be working. And obviously there's different, like, stipulations. Like, if somebody, like, has a more severe handicap, like, um, like if someone, like, doesn't have a limb or if they're in a mobility scooter, scooter a mobility mobile um then even if they did work they'd probably still be entitled to disability what if my sister gets a high paying job and your job offer goes through that would be like really cool because then my sister and i could get like a mansion <laughs> just kidding although i have a really good credit score and so does she she and i could like literally get a mansion <laughs> just kidding <laughs> imagine guys Live from my literal million dollar mansion. Um, if the job offer goes through and she gets a good job, then... But then, like, I feel bad. Because then... I don't want to be a... Well, I was going to say homewrecker, but that's not the right word. I don't want to be somebody... I don't want to be a leech. You know, I can't leech off of her forever. But... I would only have to get a full-time job if my sister does not get a job. So if she gets a decent job, then I can like work part-time. That way I can have like money for myself. Like I can go and buy like a bubble tea. Guys, it's 11-11 Make-A-Wish. I wish my sister gets a freaking job. <laughs> okay, it's not that she's lazy. She's generally trying her best. It's just statistically, out of every job you apply for, you'll only probably get, like, callbacks or interviews for, like, maybe max 10%. Is the job you're applying to accommodating to you? Okay, so when it comes to work accommodations, you can request them if the employer asks, but it's best to request accommodations once you're actually hired on. Because if you tell your interviewer, like, oh, I can't type all day, they would be like, ooh, and then that's kind of a negative, right? And even though companies cannot discriminate during the interview process, that's kind of, like, if you disclose information about you, then they can use that to make their decision. Even if it's not discriminatory, they can still use that against you. They just cannot explicitly say the reason why you're not hired is because you can't type all day. So... Just in general, even if you have like a- if you're on the spectrum, like if you have ADHD or autism, I would never disclose that during interview. Always save that disclosure for um, once you're hired on and always ask to speak to the HR team. And if you can't reach the HR team, um, you can disclose it to your manager. And in order to formally request um, accommodations, the workplace might request that you have like medical documentation like you have to fill out forms um i think it's standard to where you have to like write a letter requesting accommodation so just don't don't be leaking <laughs> that you have adhd on the timeline like in the interview i mean when job applying i don't say yeah like you know when you apply to jobs and then and then there's like that one section it's like oh do you want to disclose that you have a disability we promise we won't discriminate legally we can't I, even when I wasn't, um, or I didn't know that I was disabled, I still didn't check off that box. I would always say I do not wish to disclose because, like, one, I don't want to be, like, a, how do I say this? 
I don't want to be like a diversity hire. Like I don't I don't want to be hired just because like I'm POC or I'm disabled because you know there are grants that companies can receive if they have certain a certain amount of employees that fit certain different graphics. Like that's a thing. But we love affirmative action. Um, but I, I still don't feel comfortable disclosing. But yeah, guys, just know your rights when applying and doing interviews and stuff. Protect yourself. Okay, I've stalled for 15 minutes. Let's play the game. Sorry, my sister just texted me. <laughs> the only time <laughs> I'll have it is to I'll tell this to a trusted coworker or when I'm quitting. Yeah. <laughs> no, wait. You know what the strat is? You know what the strat is actually? If you feel like your boss doesn't like you, that's when you leak and say, "Oh, I'm this." And then if they fire you, you can claim discrimination. <laughs> This is the wrong account. <clears throat> Why do I think today was pumpkin decorating? I think I said yesterday I was gonna choose between the two. Um, trigger warning? This game is, um, rated mature. It has flashing lights, blood, violence, strong language like cursing, and in some later sequences in the game there is depictions and mentions of unaliving. I don't think that'll be in today's stream though, cause, um, last time we ended this, I beat um, Shogo Ikie's route, and then we learned that there are actually there are actually three different storyline paths. So we beat all of Shogo's last time, and I think <laughs> I think when people normally play, because um spoilers, go back and watch the vod. I'll mute yourself for ten seconds if you didn't watch um the other day's vod. Um, I think when. Yoko like died. I think we initially were supposed to keep calling out to her because see like how quick the sequence is Like I think I did the true route accidentally first Yay So today I think I'm gonna do these in order You know, I think the detective would have the most interesting path, but I feel like it makes sense to do them last but I'm just gonna do these in order. Oh, here, thumbs up. <laughs> Spoilers over. <laughs> so even if you didn't watch the last time we played this, these are all kind of different storylines that are intertwined. So you can watch today's and then not be kind of spoiled. You would, it would just, it kind of builds off of each other because they're all completely separate storylines. Sorry, my sister texted me. Okay, all good. She went to the doctors by herself today. So proud. It's funny, because guys, make sure you get your regular annual physicals and checkups, because you never know if something underlying is wrong, or you never know if a pain is actually something bad. Um, I was talking to her this morning, and she's like, nothing's wrong, what do I tell my doctor? I'm like, oh, you just tell them nothing's wrong, smile. It's easy. You should still take your vitals, still, like, do your normal physical. That way, if something happens throughout the year, then you're documented that you were fine six months ago, or whenever the last time you went to the doctor. Okay. Let's go ahead and get started with Harawe Shigima's route. Um, I don't really remember the voice I gave her, but I think because she's like kind of like formal, so I'll give her more of a a formal voice because I think I gave her a really high pitched one. Okay, so we're starting Harawe Shigima's route, part one, not dreams. Not dreams, Harawe Shigima. When the son of Harawe Shigima was kidnapped. Okay, we didn't know that. She just said her son died. Wait. Oh, that's why she's an investigator. Oh my god. 
this game is amazing. Okay. When the son of Haraway Shigeme was kidnapped, a botched investigation by the police resulted in the child's murder. One year later, Haraway has hired a private investigator to help resolve the unsettled case. Late at night, while speaking to the detective at her home, something strange suddenly appears. Oh, this is gonna be interesting! Cause she, she just said her son died. Okay, she must be like a high standing member of society. It said she was like upper class. Ooh. Kill them! Kill them, the flame bears! Kill them all! You've acquired the power of the cursed stone, the haunting clappers. You can use it to kill those with fire or a fire starting device on their person. Press the use curse button to set your target to light. Okay, we're just starting off just getting instantly cursed. Okay, I assume this is the woman. A murderous impulse seeps into my soul like thick black tar. So strongly desire the right. Kill them. Haraway Shigima. Twelve AM. Shigima Mansion Reception Room. Oh my god, she literally has a mansion. <laughs> Richard. Back with me, ma'am. Yeah, Rich was the detective. Can't say I understand what just happened, but it certainly seems to have put you in a good mood. This might be the first time I've ever seen you really smile. Sweet dreams? Housewife, Harawe Shigima. No. Not dreams. Sounds like something I might want to hear about. A fax machine. It can send images to other places along the telephone network. I don't really know how it works. Most houses don't have one. I rarely find a use for it. An old hanging scroll. I don't know who painted it. It's been hanging here since I was born. Dude, I hate, like, looking behind me. I know there's nothing scary, but I just got cursed. An arrangement of flowers. We bring in someone to do it. I don't even know what the flowers are called. Those look like... Hydrangeas. No, they don't. They look like large hydrangeas. A stereo unit was with separated speakers designed for home use. My husband insisted on buying one, even though he isn't one to listen to music often. Oh, I can look behind me. Well, I'll be damned. Is that what I think it is? Goodness, you made me jump. It's just a silly little sticker my son got from somewhere or other. He put it up just before... Well, you know what happened. I still can't bring myself to take it down. Let me take a closer look. I knew it. It's Head Hentro from way back in set number one. This is a real collector's item. Excuse me? Don't tell me you've never heard of the Mockingbirds. The what? They're the hottest new craze. Cute little birds dressed up like rough and tumble delinquents. I have never heard of them, but this certainly seems to matter to you. The best part is, nobody knows who made them. They just started showing up around town, and soon enough they'd won everybody's hearts. The story goes that they're made by some anonymous artist who, cover who covertly leaves them behind in specific locations. No one knows when or where they'll show up next, 
They're basically an urban legend of sorts. To think one would turn up here of all places. This is a good sign. I'm sure of it. Oh, well, that's nice. How did our son get the artist sticker? Why was it tagged here? Hmm. Maybe it's a clue. A color television. Father bought one as soon as it hit the market. He likes to have the latest gadgets. Unlike the latest models, there is no remote control. We've had it for a long time. Back when it was new, we all gathered around it and marveled at it as a family. But with father and my husband being away so often, it quickly fell into disuse. Ooh, why is the lighting so weird in this room? The swinging of the pendulum echoes through the room. It feels livelier than usual with Richard here. Usually it's just me. The lights. The chandelier is the only thing in here that's my choice. It's my favorite part of the room. The guest table. I don't know where father got this old thing from, but I've never liked it. Seems like she just stays at home, no control in her life. Classic housewife. You know what else is classic? Following the channel, because guys, we are another 30 minutes in the stream, so if you're newer, follow. You get cool emotes and you get to type in chat. Wow. Can we hit our goal? Smile. And if you're already following, turn notifications on. That way you don't miss a single stream. Okay, back to it. Let's talk to Richard. A private investigator I hired. A friend told me about him. They said he's not very well known, but he's good at what he does. When I first visited his office in Elta City and saw how he dressed, I could hardly believe he was a detective. But after talking to him for a while, I changed my mind. He says some strange things at times, but he seems like the reliable sort. Okay, okay. So, when we first saw this guy on the bridge with Shoujo, he asked for the lighter. Or he asked if I had a lighter. I'm just trying to put the pieces together. So, I think he wanted to see if I had... I think if we would have... If we would have offered to give him the lighter, I think he would have said no. And then he would have gone back to... um the woman and said oh you can kill him he has a lighter on him that's what i think i think that sequence will happen okay let's talk to the detective let me bring you up to speed we were in the middle of a chat when you suddenly started spacing out and the whole time, you were grinning to yourself like you just won the lottery. Care to tell me what that was all about? Huh. Well, where to start? Hmm, interesting. Very interesting. So the Haunted Clapper's curse echo appeared out of nowhere, told you how to perform the right of resurrection, and gave you the curse you'll need to do it. Have I got that right? That's right. So it's all real. Honestly, I still find it hard to believe. But I guess I have to now. I saw that curse don't appear in your hand myself. It looked like it popped clean out of thin air. With evidence that clear, there's no denying that there's some supernatural force here at work. I don't think you quite understand. Oh? This isn't about evidence, and it isn't about belief. It's more than that. I know it's real. The moment the curse appeared, I knew everything before it even said a word. It was already there in my head, as clear as day. You just knew, huh? It was etched onto my soul, 
along with the curse's echoes resentful memories, so I can feel it, what it was like. Dying like they did hundreds of years ago, right, wreathed in flame, writhing in pain as my flesh blackens and my blood boils. I can feel it, all the agony, all the rage. It fills me with bloodlust. I think I need to kill someone. Anyone will do, just as long as they're carrying fire. I see. That could be a problem. You think so? From what I know of you, I'm sure you'd see it as an opportunity. The stronger the desire to resurrect someone, the stronger the urge to kill. That's how it seems to me, anyway. Good grief. Talk about a spanner in the works. I say we take stock for a moment. Remind ourselves where we've come from and where we're going. That might be a good idea. Hmm. So it seems like once you're possessed by the curse, you literally cannot control it? Because she was saying, oh, I feel like all his memories are etched onto my soul. So you're almost treated like a vessel, like you have no control truly over the power. And we saw that in the initial Shogo sequences, where I literally didn't press the kill button and I still killed. So I- it's not- I wouldn't say these are curses. They are cursed items, but they just truly possess you. Because when I think of curse, I think of like... Um... Doing like... You know, Harry Potter, you do a little thing with your wand, and then you make something happen. That's what you hired me for, ma'am. To look into your son's kidnapping last year. To uncover the truth behind the abduction and murder of Shuichi Shigima. Oh yes, I remember. They never did find the one who did it. That's what I'm here about today, in fact. Kind of you to let me drop by so late, by the way. I've been turning over every last stone, and I've come up with a grand total of... One lead. So you said. As far as the police are concerned, it's a cold case, but I've managed to make some headway. I remember. You were just about to tell me. Hmm. It was my husband. Because he hates me and hates my kid. Oh, I didn't click on the phone. The telephone. This mansion has a private line. Oh, wow, cool. About the kidnapping. I suppose there's not much point going over the kidnapping itself. No, I'm very familiar. Then I'll leave that for the files to cover and just confirm a few things about the case. The police trace the culprit's calls back to, let's see here, Northern o Oyoko River, here in Shimita City. That's quite a ride area. That's right. In the end, they never managed to nail down exactly where the calls were coming from. But it was almost certainly the same location that Sui <laughs> Shu 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 Shuichi was being held captive. Since Shuichi, Suichi, Shuichi, okay. I'm practicing. I'm learning Spanish, not Japanese. Okay. Since Shuiki's vo voice could be heard during the killer's calls. Northern Oyoko River is quite a distance from Sh Shuichi's normal school commute. Factoring in that he was saying factoring in that he was seen at school but went missing before he arrived at his house. It's likely he was abducted by car on his route home. Maybe, but exactly. Shuichi was a clever boy. He never would have got into a car with a stranger. That's right. I was very firm about that. I know he understood, too. I even saw him warning the other children. It's possible that they were forced him into the car. The only issue there is, there weren't any witnesses to the kidnapping. You can't bundle someone into a car with that many students around and not be noticed. But nobody came forward to say they saw anything suspicious. I think... Because she said previously that her son was like an anti-bully, like he would like stand up against the bullies. I think some kids like just murked his ass. Because how 
Because it said he went missing for a year and then it led to his murder. So... Well, we're missing a lot of details in between. I think it was the kids. Okay, wait. Somebody got auto-modded twice. <laughs> Earlier we were talking about the MILF tag and two of you guys got... Got automated for typing MILF in chat. <laughs> I did I just saw that now, sorry guys. <laughs> but nobody came forward to say they saw anything suspicious. So did they target him at a some other time or somewhere away from his usual route? Both of those seem a little far fetched. Which raises the question, how did the kidnapper pull it off? The police never managed to find an answer. In the end, they decided that the kidnapper must have gotten lucky. Well, why not turn the problem on its head? Mm. The kidnapper managed to convince Shuichi to get into their car, but how? The only thing that makes sense to me is if they were somebody that he would have had a reason to trust. A teacher, perhaps, or a relative, or somebody else that he knew. But all the adults that Suichi knew had alibis. The police checked them all thoroughly. They did, huh? No one throws numbers at problems like the cops. Is he a cab? But what if it wasn't someone he knew, or rather... What if the culprit disguised themselves as a police officer? <gasps> Uh-oh. That would explain why he didn't find them suspicious. The Shigima family has close ties with the police after all. He would have had a reason to trust them. You might be right. But surely they couldn't have... Well, there's a problem with the theory. You'd be surprised how many police... You'd be surprised how much police officers stand out. That's sort of the point, after all. They're meant to be a visible deterrent against crime. Hmm. That's why, like, I'm really scared about deep fakes. Like, I've seen a handful of, like, anecdotal people say they've gotten, like, scam called. Like, it, there's, like, the classic scam call of, like, Oh, I'm your grandma, and I'm, like, I'm kidnapped. Give me ten million dollars. Ooh. But... I've seen a few people tell stories of they'll get that scam call, but it's like literally the their actual grandma or their actual mom's voice. Like people are deep, like scammers are deep faking people's voices for scams. That's why like there there needs to be firmer regulation on like AI or deep fake technology. Like I think people, like anybody, should have to give like written consent to have their information to be used for AI or deepfake technology. <clears throat> I want to learn more about the kidnapping. But here's another interesting little tid, <laughs> little bit of trivia I happen to know. When you ask people to imagine someone suspicious, nobody pictures women or children. Even kids who have been warned about stranger danger often subconsciously expect the danger to look like an adult man. Besides, Shuichi was sort of the was the sort of boy who wanted to be a police officer when he grew up. He must have had a strong sense of right and wrong. That's right. Wait, surely you can't mean Now you're getting it. If, say, a young woman approached Shuichi asking for help, what would he have done? If someone like that said they were lost and asked him for directions, would he have gotten in a car? He might have. My husband always told him that a man had a duty to watch out for women and children. You could certainly argue that kind of attitude is outdated nowadays. But if Shuichi believed it, then we might have something here. Then, you think the culprit was a young woman? But it was a man's voice on the phone. She might have been an accomplice, or maybe she didn't even realize she was being used. If anything, that would explain why she hasn't come forward. She herself might not realize she had anything to do with the case. Mm -hmm. 
So, the question is, did anybody see Shuichi speaking with a young woman on the day of his disappearance? See, what I said about people's biases, that goes for witnesses too. And I figured that maybe if I started asking new questions, I might get some new answers. So I spent my day asking around Shuichi's school route, seeing if anyone had seen something. And one man thought he had. Do you mean... He saw it happen. Well, I can't say that for sure yet. It turned out he wanted something from me, so we asked if he could talk in private. Flashback. Several hours earlier. All right, this should do. There's no one around. We can speak in confidence. Um, excuse me. What was your name again? Jonauchi. Got it. Well, Jonauchi, I'm all yours. Just so we're on the same page, you're a private detective investigating Shuichi Shigima's kidnapping. Do I have that right? Of course. What else do I look like? How should I know what a private detective looks like? Ah, forget it. Look, I'll tell you straight. My life is in danger. I need your help. Oh? You'll excuse me if you caught me a little off guard. Let me ask you straight. Who was trying to kill you? A student called Mio Michio Shiraishi. Shiraishi. Interesting. A schoolgirl, eh? Sounds like you've been naughty. It, it's nothing like that. That girl, she's she's a murderer. I'm the only one who knows, but I saw what she did. Michio Shiraishi. I saw her kidnap. I saw her kidnap. <laughs> I saw her kidnap. Shiochi Shigima. Come again? I just saw her talk to him on the street and lead him away. I didn't think much of it at the time, but then he went missing. She murdered him, I'm sure of it. Or at least she's got something to do with it. That's what you're here for, isn't it? Then you can't let her get to me. If that's true, you've been sitting on some valuable information. Why didn't you tell anybody? Well, you see, if you can't explain that, I don't have any reason to believe- Oh, sorry. Wrong voice. If you can't explain that, I don't have any reason to believe you. I- I couldn't. She told me she'd kill me if I spoke a word. You're telling me a schoolgirl had you scared for your life. So you've been sitting on that all this time, and you think she's coming for you now that you've spilled the beans? Yes. That's it. Exactly. I'm begging you. Don't let her get to me. Arrest her. I'm telling you. She's a demon. Well, you seem to believe what you're saying, but it just doesn't add up. How could a schoolgirl have a fully grown man so terrified? You don't know what she can do. She'll... She'll curse me. Curse you? I'm sorry, but you're losing me here. It's true. Her house... It's... Ah, oh, forget it. Why do I even bother? You seem dubious enough to believe me, but I should have known you'd never understand. Enough. I'll find someone else to help me. Hey. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder. And that's about the long and short of it. I can hardly believe it. At the time, I thought his mention of curses were just crazy talk. But I'm starting to see that there might have been more to it. Then, if we can just find that girl. Curse or no curse, if she was with Shuichi on the day of the kidnapping, then there's a good chance she knows something. On top of that, I did some digging on the man I spoke to. His full name is Kohei Jonochi. He's a teacher at... He looked like a student. He's a teacher at, Koma... at Komagata High School here in Shumira. A teacher? Then the schoolgirl... Is one of his students. I think that's very likely. 
Hmm. I wonder if that was the girl that Shoujo killed. Hmm. Okay, there is so much lore. <laughs> At last, we've got a lead. Hopefully, it'll be the breakthrough we're looking for. Okay, so that's all about the kidnapping. You know, we still need to figure out exactly what you want me to do. Tell you what. Why don't I tell you what I found, and then we can make a decision. All right. Okay, that was the same dialogue sequence. I'll do about the Rite of Resurrection. The Rite of Resurrection, huh? I read about that in a Nicole magazine the other day. Apparently some old books showed up recently with all the gory details. And they say that the Rite can be found somewhere in Hondro. I remember the first time you told me about that. It felt like... Like my prayers had been heard. Like I had hope. Real hope for the first time. Ever since that awful day, I've wondered. What if I hadn't sent him to school? What if I just paid the ransom? Not a day goes by when I don't think that I'd... Not a day goes by when I don't think that if I'd done something differently, Shuichi would still be alive. You can't blame yourself, ma'am. It was the culprit's fault, not yours. Though I know that wouldn't help any. Grief is funny like that. I'm guessing that's why you're after the right. Guess I didn't need to ask. It's written all over your face. I can tell how much he meant to you. But. And this is a big but. If the right is the real deal, using it will mean killing someone and stealing their soul. Is that... Oh, wrong place. Is that a problem? If it comes to that, I'm afraid I'll have to stop you. Oh, that's a shame. A shame, huh? That's all? I thought, if I'm going to be competing with other curse bearers, then your detective skills might come in useful. You realize you're talking about ending someone's life, right? Don't you see an issue with that? I think any parent in my position would happily kill for a chance like this. That's so, is it? Dear, oh dear, what have I gotten myself into? I mean, she didn't kill the detective. If it makes you uncomfortable, then you won't have to get any blood on your hands yourself. I don't need you to kill the other curse bearers. I only need you to find them. I won't be a party to murder, ma'am. Not even for a client. Okay, if I say I'll pay you, he's gonna be like, I'm not gonna take the L, no money for crimes. And if I say that's a shame, I'm probably gonna threaten him, and I think that's gonna do... I think threatening him will be better than offering money. I see. I didn't realize you were so stubborn. Let me say, though, it's not like I don't get what you're going through. As long as you're not killing anyone with your own hands, maybe I can help you out. What do you have in mind? Well, how about stealing someone else's cursed stone after they filled it with soul dredge? If that was all you were after, then I can lend you my services guilt-free. If the other curse bearers want to kill each other, then that's their business. I'm not trying to be a hero here. I guess there's no guarantee a stolen curse stone will work, but we can worry about that later. Well then, I suppose we have a deal. Although, what if I stole a curse stone using my curse? Would you disapprove? That would void our contract, ma'am. Just warning you now. My. In the sequence of Shoujo, she says she doesn't like to kill, but her curse is telling her to kill. So I wonder if she... So the detective was probably watching Shoujo from afar and waited till he had enough soul glims 
And then he was like, oh yeah, you can just kill this guy because he killed other people. But then Shoujo ended up killing her in the other sequence. Mm. I like this storyline a lot more. I like detective stuff a lot. You know, I loved Knives Out. Before we go any further, why don't you tell me about that curse of yours? The haunting clappers, was it? That's one of the seven mysteries of Honjo, if I remember correctly. That's right. The original story did happen somewhere near here, I think. I'm sure I remember hearing that. In that case, my money would be on... In that case, my money would be on all the curse bearers being somewhere in Honjo. Our first move should be to narrow them down. Some of them are bound to try and come for you first. We'll need to be ready. The curse make their bearers more willing to kill, so an attack could come from anywhere. That sounds sensible. And if I remember correctly, your haunting clappers can set people on fire, but only if they have a naked flame or a lighter on their person. Is that right? That's right. In olden times, wooden clappers were used to warn people of fire. I'm guessing it punishes those who don't heed the warning. It seems like a good curse to have. It's simple and straightforward enough to use. Although it's hard to say how it stacks up without knowing what else is on the table. You really think it's that good? The target can't do much to throw it off. It has a nice long activation window. It's big that it works on ladders too. Just slip one into your target's pocket. And say that condition was already fulfilled before they even knew you were there. Then you wouldn't even know what hit them. Maybe I won't have to actually use it. I could just tell someone I could, and they'd have to do what I said. Threats could work. Although without any proof, it'll come down to how convincing you can be. If only you could use the curse, then back out at the last second. At the last second? What an interesting idea. I have a ladder right here. We could try it now. That's an interesting proposition. But maybe not. I'm not quite crazy enough to make myself a guinea pig. Oh, I see. You're an odd one, ma'am. If you don't mind me saying. And I don't think it's just the curse. <laughs> you flatterer. Are they gonna bang? <laughs> I mean, her husband's never home. As for what we do next, first of all, I think you should stay indoors. Try not to do anything spontaneous or outside of your normal routine. Right then. Have you decided what you want me to... What you... What... Right then. Have you decided what you want me working on? Um, I want to learn lore, so let's investigate the kidnapping. Finally. Finally, I have a lead. I need to know what happened to my son. Your wish is my command, ma'am. I'll focus all my efforts on to looking into the kidnapping. Although, something just occurred to me. You can't investigate the matter at night, can you? At least until the sun rises. Could you search out for the other curse bearers? All right. I see how it is. Well, I'd be happy to help. Odds are good that the other curse bearers are also working by night. Anyone they kill under the covers of darkness won't be discovered until sunrise. I bet they're trying to do as much as they can before the morning comes. So what's settled then? I'll look into the other curse bearers by night. And once the city wakes up and I can start asking questions, I'll investigate the kidnapping as well. I'll even try and find Miss Shiraishi as part of the bargain. Thank you. That's more than enough. Now then. I should get to work. There's only so much time before sunrise. I'll call you if I find out anything new. You stay here and keep a lookout. All right. There's no telling what kind of curses you might find out on the streets tonight. Don't go outside if you can help it. Try to be ready for anything. I will. Well, if that's all, I should be going.
a nice thought. Okay, looks like I went outside. No, I almost clicked the end stream button. Because <laughs> if I don't use my mouse for a little bit, it like disappears from the screen, so I have to click to get it to activate again. <laughs> you know what else I have to activate? An ad, because guys, we are an hour in a stream, so it's time for me to run some ads. You can avoid the ad by subscribing for $4.99, just $5. Skip your coffee and get ad free viewing all month long. Or you can link Amazon Prime to your Twitch and hashtag sub for free with Prime. Click subscribe, see if you have a Prime available. Smile. Also, I think I messed with my filters on my camera. I'm way too, like, orangey. There we go. Holy moly. Look at the difference on that. Because <laughs> I changed my saturation levels for the Pokemon card stream. And I forgot to change it back. <laughs> now I, I look so much better now. Oh my god. I was looking like to Trump. A nice thought. Haroi Shigima. Despite having obtained the curse of the haunting clappers, Harui Shigima is determined to use the Rite of Resurrection by stealing the remaining curse stones. She instructs her private investigator, Richard, to find the other curse bearers. So it seems like with the dialogue choices, they all have the same outcome. And that's fine, it's whatever. Harui Shigima. 1 a.m. Shigima Mansion Reception Room. It's been almost an hour since Richard left. He promised he'd call me if anything happened. But he hasn't. So all they can do is wait and wait. The flowers put me at ease, just a little. That old hanging scroll. I've seen it too often to feel anything from it now. Should I put a record on? No, it's too late for that. I'm not in the mood for music anyway. Oh, I can't click on the sticker now. Why is it so dark in this room? I hate it. My husband used to complain that it was too dark, but I rather like the gloom. Okay, this lady is weird. I'm waiting for Richard to contact me, but he hasn't. It's a fax machine. I rarely find a use for it. I don't know anybody else who owns one. What's this? A newspaper. It must have fallen off the chair. I'll read it. It's a newspaper. I only leave them in here for the guests. I hardly ever read them myself. I don't think I've taken the time to go over one in years, in fact. Well, it's not like I have anything better to do. It looks like the city's biggest problem right now is pollution. I remember how the air and water used to be even more polluted. The river was covered in scum from all the sewage and industrial waste, and it stinks so badly it'd make my eyes water. Eventually, people started getting sick, and it couldn't be ignored anymore. Fortunately, it's gotten better since then. Although the air around the industrial district is still filthy with gas and smog. All sorts of articles about the current state of the economy. Now that the post-war boom has passed its peak, we're moving into the era of large corporations. It's about 220 to 230 yen to the dollar. Manufacturing is on the rise and exports are healthy. The dollar's down from its height, and the people are saying it could fall further. There's no denying how much the standard of living has improved in the past few years. It's common to own a car and television now, and supermarkets are better stocked than ever. Now that 
everyone has more spending money to go around, people are coming up with all kinds of new diversions. It seems like only yesterday that people were flocking to the arcades to shoot aliens. But now we have these enormous theme parks and gaming machines that plug straight into our televisions. Everyone's talking about superhero series, foreign films, and movies based on the latest bestseller. Back in my day, fusion rock and folk music were all the rage. But now it's all about city pop and idols. I find it hard to care about that sort of thing anymore. You're just a boomer. <laughs> Everyone attends high school now, even girls. Universal education policy, they call it. The country's gotten rich enough that every child can go to school. Education is the backbone of modern society. And if you want to work for a good company, you have to get into a good university. With more people in the running than ever, the competition to get into those universities has gotten fierce, though. The new generation is repelling. Schoolyard violence and, delinqu schoolyard violence and delinquency are on the rise. But my boy was too sensible to get mixed up in any of that. I don't want to read anymore. It'll only remind me of him. Oh, wait, there's more dialogue? I don't really watch much television. It feels as if all the information in the world gets passed through that little black box. But father stopped them from reporting on the kidnapping back when it happened. I was glad about that. Less fuss. Now that the comedy boom is over, all the comedians are flocking to other genres. The occult seems really popular at the moment. Look at all these paranormal specials. Dude, my nose is so itchy. Itchy Nisan Shi Goroku. That's the only Japanese I know. <laughs> I hear the new big thing is some mascot line of delinquent birds. Mockingbirds, I think it's called. What was that? That... What that... Wait. <laughs> was that what Richard was talking about? Trends seem to have such short lives... Trends seem to have such short shelf lives now, with how quickly the times are changing. I think I'm just too old to keep up anymore. It's young people who are leading the way with their modern worldviews. My generation will only fall further behind. Classic boomer take. Although with everyone flocking into the city, land prices are skyrocketing. Nowadays, most people can only dream of homeownership. The city center is going to be nothing but apartments before long. Huh. I'm not exactly a businesswoman, so this all feels like another world to me. If there's one thing Honjo never wants for, it's horrific crimes. They found a police officer dead in a local park just the other day. A lot of my family are in the police. I hope it wasn't anybody I knew. I don't read the news anymore. Not since last year. It brings back bad memories. I wonder why the detective and the police officer were in the park. is because maybe they were investigating the death of that officer she just mentioned. Um, unaliving at local high school. Oh, I remember that. A high school girl jumped off a roof about a week ago. She was bullied, I think. Or maybe it was something about exam pressure. Huh. What? But, no, this can't be right. Her name. Michio Shiraishi from Komagata High School. It can't be. Uh oh. It was the girl who the professor was scared of. Now the scary music is playing. I don't think we're supposed to find that sequence. The ticking seems so loud. It just goes to show how quiet it is. There's nothing on at this hour. I see no point in turning it on. Oh, the music is still playing. Could 
Come to think of it, I never offered him any tea. Not that I ever learned how to make it. Okay, I'm gonna think. Michio Shiraishi, the same girl who witnessed my son's kidnapping, and alive last week. But that means... Mr. Jinochi was terrified of someone who already died. Is that what he meant by a curse? I can't work this out on my own. Maybe Richard will know. Why won't he call? Oh, I haven't left it off the hook, have I? I was waiting for Richard to contact me, but he hasn't. I've made sure the receiver is on the hook. It'll ring as soon as he calls. Huh. Oh. That must be him. Hello? Shigima residence? Haraway Shigima. 2 a.m. Komagata Bridge. This is where the college student was, I think. Richard called me out to meet him, and we came here, to Kamagata Bridge. Richard, there's something I need to tell you. Funny, I was just thinking the same thing. We're on, Kam We're on Kamagata Bridge, over the Sh Sumida River. There's a highway on one side, and a freeway on the other. But they're both deserted this late at night. <laughs> the Sumida River. The water is filthy and horrid, but at night when it's still it looks almost peaceful. Can I ask you something, ma'am? Is the Sumida River what you Honjo folks picture when you think of home? I couldn't say. All I can tell you is that I can hardly stand the sight of it. Right. Should have guessed. This is where they found him after he went missing. All alone, floating in that horrible water. All I can think... Is how scared he must have been. How cold he must have been. What did he ever do to deserve something so awful? I've come here every day since then. And I pray to the river to give him back. To give back my son. Day after day after day. You know, in olden times, people believed rivers marked where our world met the next. So the act of crossing flowing water had a huge amount of s spiritual significance. Back when Edo was founded, the people of Chuo saw the Sumida River the same way. They associated the far side of the river with the afterlife. That same place would later become Hondru. All their fear and all their fear and revulsion accumulated there and took root. But then, the re Ryogoku Bridge sprang up after the Great Fire of Meriki, and just like that, Honjo was part of the city, too. And as it turned from foreign land into a town, the people surrounded it with man-made rivers and crisscrossed it with canals and waterways. Weren't those to prevent flooding? That's what I was told. They were, but that's not all they were for. Their other purposes were to contain all the corruption that had built up on the far shore, and stop it leaking through to our side of the Great Divide. Officially, there were a physical barrier, but un unofficially, there were a spiritual one, too. So, if I have this right, are you saying that Honjo is a place where the real world meets the afterlife? Exactly. That's where the writer Richard... That's why the rite of resurrection is here, 
rather than anywhere else, I'm sure of it. And it's probably why the Seven Mysteries and their curses have survived to the modern day. And I guess that would make this the spot we're standing now, right over the water. The border between life and death. If there ever were a place where bringing back the dead might be possible, I reckon it's here. It's funny that you mentioned praying to the river. That might have done more than you think. Is that supposed to make me feel better? Just thinking aloud, ma'am. Hmm. Well, it's a nice thought. A mark here. Oh, wait, pause. Don't they stop me? Camera. Ah, yeah. Mi camera está aquí. Yeah, I'm going to verify that the audio is synced. I'm back. Mockingbird number 18 discovered. I wanted to see if something different happened when I clicked on it again. Looks like no one else is here. He's gazing down at the water. What does he see down there, I wonder? Go where? I don't want to go in the water. Oh no. Please, go ahead. All right, then. I've been poking around places connected to the Seven Mysteries, looking for curse bearers, and I think I've found a few candidates. First, a tall man I ran to. I ran into at Kinshibori Park. I asked him for directions, trying to probe him a little, but he turned the questions right back around on me. And he was out of there the second he figured out it wasn't what he was looking for. I got the sense curses were nothing new to him. I'm about 40% sure he's a curse bearer. Then there's this middle-aged guy I saw on South Wadigeshui Street. There's no question about this one. He had one of the curse stones in his hand. He had a nervous air about him too. It was clear he's up to some shady business. Gathering soul dredges, I bet. He'd make a good target. Next up is a pair, a young man and a woman I saw around Rigoku Bridge. This time the man came up to me and asked me flat out if I was a curse bearer. I told him I didn't know what he was talking about and he backpedaled and left. Looks like they lurk around there often, looking for kindred spirits would be my guess. Though it didn't seem like they were quite working as a pair. Gathering soul dredges in a group might be a decent idea if you can make it work. But with things being how they are, it's got to be hard to find folks one can trust. They've got brass, though. I don't know what their deal is, but I'd like to find out. Last is two detectives I've seen sniffing around. 
The police are involved. Not necessarily. A body turned up in a local park a few days ago, so they might just be looking into that. Still, the park's got ties to one of the seven mysteries. Might be it was a curse that did the guy in. And if they're sending in detectives from the head office, then something's got to be up. How do you know where they're from? Let's just say that when you're in this business, there are some faces you get to know. Anyway, that's everyone who's caught my eye. You found all of them in such little time. I really did hire the best. It's all in the name, ma'am. Richard Kai, P.I. No, wait. Make that Richard Kai investigator extraordinaire. Why? An investigator extraordinaire? Is that why you can dress like that without drawing attention to yourself? You bet. An investigator extraordinaire can blend in like a chameleon in any outfit. Well, that aside, the middle-aged man and the young couple sound the most promising, am I right? Whichever we pick, it's still too early to make a move. It seems like the cursed bearers are less involved with each other than we thought. Plus, there are still others we don't know about. I say we hang fire and see how things play out. Once more bodies start showing up, that'll get the pot nice and hot. And once it's boiling, our chance will come. There's something I need to tell you. What's up? Well, that girl, Michio Shiraishi, the one who was with Shuichi on the day of the kidnapping, that's her. Well, she's dead. She's what? The student who, can, who unalived last week, that was her. I heard something like that had happened, never got the name though. Talk about bad luck. We finally get a lead only to find it's turned into a literal dead end. Unless her death was the whole reason Janochi was so shaken up. He said she was going to curse him. Was he talking about her taking revenge from beyond the grave? It seems like we're back to where we started. Not necessarily. That teacher knows something, I'm sure of it. At the very least, I'd put money on him having something to do with, to do with Miss Shidaishi's death. That's why he's so scared of being cursed by her. I see. And also, something tells me he knows more about your son's kidnapping. In any case, I think I've got a good idea of what he's hiding. Call it a hunch. A hunch? Well, more of a theory. Care to take a guess? I can guess. I can't say for certain, but... The teacher silenced the girl who unalived. With murder. What if Mr. Junochi silenced Micho Michio Shirashi with murder? What do you think? I see. So you think Miss Shirashi's death might not have been suicide? Or unaliving. Oopsie. That would certainly give him a good reason to think she'd hold a grudge, but I'm not sure I'd buy it. Hmm. That might be a little bit far-fetched. I see. I'm sorry if I disappointed you. I'm not really cut out to play detective. Well, no point dwelling on speculation. The truth will be out in no time. Right now, I think we need to have another chat with Mr. Junochi. Didn't you want to tell me something? I have already said everything I wanted to say. Oh, okay. Standing around is the last thing I want to be doing right now. This is my only chance to bring back my son. I can't afford to fritter it away. Okay, I don't see anything new.
Okay, I'm gonna check my log, my files. Same strat, just clicking through everything. Wait, why is there a new how to play button? Oh, it's just explaining the story chart. I'm clicking through everything. Okay, everything is looked at. Okay, so what do I do now? Okay, there's something I haven't done. Oh, the river. Oh, that's right. There's one more memory I have of this river. Do you mind if I tell you? Go ahead. It must have been about 20 years now, when I was still a schoolgirl. Back then, the Sumida River was much filthier than it is now. It was full of garbage and industrial discharge. It was scummy and slimy, and it stank. You can look out over the water and see dead cats and dogs and pigeons, just floating. And one day, among all the filth and garbage, there was a piece of my missing classmate's hand. What? It was almost a miracle when you stopped to think about it. What were the chances that someone would find a part of her that was still recognizable? And that although everything but the palm had rotted away in the water, the part that was left would have an identifiable scar. And that they could tell it had been a murder from the blade marks in the bone. <laughs> what? This lady's a freak. Wait. Are you talking about the Nejima murders? So you have heard of it. I'm impressed. I assume you were but an elementary schooler at the time. I wasn't really aware of it then. I only heard about it after the fact. I had no idea the victim was a classmate of yours. To be honest, it was a bit of a blur. A wave of chaos just parting around me. Something like that. They said the rest of her body must have sunk to the bottom of the river. They combed the riverbed, but they only ever found pieces. Everything else must have rotted and flowed out to sea. Afterwards, I heard that all the divers who had been looking for her fell ill. A sorry story for everyone involved, huh? Oh, wait. Sorry, wrong voice. A sorry story for everyone involved, huh? It's funny. Everyone figures the river is filthy already, so... One more piece of garbage won't hurt. But every little bit makes it worse. It's a vicious cycle. I know I wouldn't want to go rooting around there myself. That's right. Which is why the riverbed is the last place anybody would go looking. Or so was the killer's thinking, I suppose. The times were changing quickly back then. Things were confusing. Everyone seemed to be in a hurry. Young people were moving to Tokyo in droves. Some even ran away from home to make it in the big city. And they made easy targets for bad people. A lot of them ended up disappearing without a trace. Huh? You see... Back then, if you chopped the body up into tiny pieces and threw it into the river, it would rot quickly and discreetly and sink to the bottom, never to be seen again. Are you saying what I think you're saying? They arrested him shortly after. Umuchika Nejima, the man who killed my classmate and cut her into pieces. He was so methodical about it, and it couldn't have been his first crime. And people began to wonder how many other girls he'd murdered the same way. 
The police never found any evidence or other murders in the end. But the river knows the truth. How many corpses has it swallowed up over the years, I wonder? The same thoughts spread through everyone's mind, and they started to avoid this area. So really, this river has been ranked with corruption for decades now. Or at least, that's how it seems to me. Well, was that interesting? Well, I can see why you don't have any good memories of this river. With all that darkness lurking beneath the surface, there is no reason that you would. Still, if I may, ma'am, I'm surprised you know so much about the Nejima murders. But how could I not? After all... I was the one... Who found the hand. Okay. I was just gonna say, I was the one who did it! <laughs> what? The police actually wrote me a thank you letter. They said it was only thanks to me that they managed to bring Najima to justice. That was the only time my father ever said he was proud of me. I guess it wasn't just the killer's day. Sometimes I wonder if he resents me for it. For solving the murder? What? I guess take away the... I assume her, her dad's a cop. Probably took away his glory. The Sumida River. I have nothing but awful memories of it. Is something wrong? Not really. It just struck me. It's been 20 years since the Najima murders. So it has. Not to spook you or anything, but I thought you might be interested in knowing. Huh? Oh no, is the guy free? Life in prison doesn't always mean life. There's precedent for first-time offenders being allowed out on parole after 20 years. Only if they're found to show remorse and the desire to reform themselves, of course. That's right. I'm impressed you know so much. Still, it's hard for someone with a criminal record to reintegrate into society. I hear they've been trying to fix that recently. Matching inmates with jobs and accommodation. Uh-oh. Oh, really? They keep an eye on them, of course, and make them report in for regular checkups. But to avoid discrimination, they keep the inmates' record a secret for everyone but their employers. They even give partially notorious criminals new identities. They won't be recognized in the workplace. My. The way you put it. It's like you're saying Fumichika Nijima could be out on parole right now. Back in society. Under a new name. With no money any the wiser. It's possible. As it happens, a little birdie told me about a big name making parole a few months back. I don't know if it was Nijima. But our discussion just now did bring it to mind. I see. How unsettling. Now that you mention it, I just remembered something too. What was it? I was passing Komagata High School a little while ago when I saw someone. A janitor, I think. And I could have sworn he reminded me of Fumichika Nijima. Oh. He looked a little different after 20 years. Much thinner than I remember, too. I told myself I was just seeing things. But perhaps... Perhaps it was him, after all. Why would they send them back to the same town? Like, genuinely. I, I, I agree that, like, people should be reintegrated into society, but, like... If somebody has, like, murked other people, keep them locked up. I don't care. Don't kill them, but just keep them locked up. That's my opinion. Keep them locked up for life. Genuinely for life. Like, I generally think there should be... That should... What? 
I mean, this was this this game takes place in like the forties to the eighties. So maybe they've changed that. I don't know what current policy is. And also, this is Japanese, so like internationally, there's probably different regulation. But why would they send them to the same town? That's crazy. So, what next? The big question now is what the rest of the cursed bears are up to. Luckily, the Sumida River is a good distance from any of the seven mysteries. It's unlikely that the cursed bears will come all the way here. I can finally have a moment to think. I see. All right. Suspend? <laughs> what? You cannot currently progress any further. Once your situation has changed, select resume to try again. Pressing suspend will return you to the story chart. Oh, did I mess up? I messed up. Come on. Okay, what could have gone differently? I could not pick up the phone and just let it ring. Because when we found the woman initially in the Shogo route, she was by herself. And then when she, anytime she merged Shogo, she complained about like the detective following her. So I think we, I think we're supposed to just stay home and let the phone ring. And then... And then just, like, leave on our own. Because I don't, I don't think there were any different paths I could have taken on the bridge. Because it was just talking to him. The only thing that was different was, like, do you, should I share my information about the dead girl first? Or should he share his information first about the curse bearers? I think I'm going to start from the beginning. Haruei Shigima, 1 a.m. The reception room. Okay, so we're waiting for a phone call. Oh, oh, sorry. I'm, that's new dialogue. She said, um, I can't just sit here and do nothing. I have to look for her. For Michio Shiraishi. But first, I need to find more soul dregs. I was right. I do have to leave on my own. I was right. I have to look for her. But first, I need to find more soul dregs. Can I leave? I can't leave. Okay, I think I need to wait for the phone to ring, and then if I ignore it, then I'll be able to leave. Okay, I think I'm going to click through everything. Don't read the newspaper. Fake news.
could think. Oh, okay, so I need to go fully through the newspaper sequences. I need to distract myself somehow. I don't want to be alone with my thoughts. Maybe reading the newspaper will take my mind off things. Oh yeah, that, that's when I'm going to find out the girl is dead. Yeah, read the newspaper. Ew, pollution, big L. Okay, dead police officer, ACAB. Okay, and then she found out about the dead girl. <gasps> She's dead! Scary music. Phone rings. That must be him. I'll do nothing. It's ringing. I better pick it up quickly. Okay, so I, I still have to pick it up. I was wrong. Answer the phone. Hello? Shigima residence? And then it just fades to black and then I'm on the bridge. Haraway Shigima, 2 a.m. Oh my god, it's a bridge. Back here again. Richard called me out to meet him, and we came here to Komagata Bridge. Richard, there's something I need to tell you. Funny, I was just thinking the same thing. I'll go first, I'll go first. Girl boss. There's something I need to tell you. What's up? Well... Okay, I think this is all gonna be the same dialogue. She's dead! <gasps> Ain't no way! The lead is literally dead. Haha, <laughs> funny joke. I'm a deductive. We're back to where we started. Uh-oh! Oh, he has a hunch. The okay, this is where I messed up. I said the wrong theory. Care to take a guess on my theory? I couldn't say. I'm clueless. I'm just an ordinary housewife. I'm not clever enough for all this. Are you sure? I had you down for sharper than that. That's flattering, but I'm assume, but I'm afraid you're mistaken. Anyway, that's enough speculation for now. The truth will be out in time. Right now, I think we need to have another chat with Mr. Jinochi. Please, go ahead. Alright then. Okay, he's like, ooh, there's so many curse bearers, haha. -ha. I'm, um, Detective Extraordinaire, haha. -ha. And then he said, we can't talk to the curse bears more. Can we talk about the river? Can 
Can I ask you something, ma'am? Is the Sumida River what you Honjo folks picture when you think of home? I couldn't say. All I can tell you is that I can hardly stand the sight of it. Okay, we saw this already. Should have guessed. I miss my son. I come here every day. It's the crossing between the real and the fake world. I mean, spirit world. Ghosts, don't haunt me, please. And then she's like, oh, I found my friend's dead hand. Uh-oh! I was the one who found the hand. <gasps> the river. I have nothing but bad memories of it. I'm gonna check my files. Okay, I don't want to read this because I'm not a true crime girly. Wait. Oh, I lost it. Oh. There's a part at the end that said parole. Okay, Najimu was sentenced to life in prison at his first hearing. The sentence was imposed with no appeal from the defendants. Okay, so he, he admitted to it. <gasps> A sticker! Is something wrong? Oh, and then he's like, oh, he might be free. Uh-oh. I saw him at the school. So, what next? The big question now is what the rest of the Curse Bearers are up to. Luckily, the Sumida River is a good distance from any of the Seven Mysteries. It's unlikely that the curse bearers will come all the way here. I could finally have a moment to think. I see. All right. What? Oh, wait. Do I have to, like, go between the storylines? Oh, wait. Because Shogo's was linear, right? Like, we did all of Shogo's story. So I probably have to do everybody else's in between. Okay, I'm gonna look that up really quick. I think that's what I have to do. Because it said I cannot progress any further anyway. Once the situation has changed, you can resume. I'm looking up a walkthrough real quick. Paranormal site walkthrough. Okay, th this is like the third paragraph in the walkthrough. Paranormal site is divided into a few separate chapters. At certain points in the game, you will have to pursue and complete other characters' routes before you can progress the entire story. You know that this is the case when the new chapter's icon in a character's route is obscured by static. 
You'll know that this is the case when the next chapter's icon in a character's route is obscured by static. Okay, wait, I don't see that. I don't see that. Okay, looking at Shogo's route, skimming, skimming. Skimming. Okay, a nice thought, which is the chapter I just did. Examine the newspaper, read the articles, which I fully did. Okay, at the bridge, examine your surroundings. The Sumida River required two examinations. I did. Um. Okay, I'm, I might have spoiled myself. <laughs> Oopsie. Um, exhaust Richard's dialogue. When prompted to make a guess, select the following choices. Blank, blank, blank. If you're prompted to suspend the chapter here, progress Tetsuo's route, which is the detective, until you've completed this section. It says, if you are prompted to suspend the chapter. Okay. I'm gonna go back in to the bridge dialogue and do the suggested guesses. Start from the conversation on the bridge. So, what next? Oh, wait. How do I go back? Story chart, I messed up. Restart. Wait, I'm gonna start from the beginning. No, no. <laughs> it's resume. Restarts from the beginning. Beginning. Resume is where you can pick up from sections. Yep, right here. Start from the bridge. I'm gonna get this first try. I thought they were gonna be like linear perspectives, but I guess not. You talk about the river twice. The river is stinky and ugly pollution. It's the barrier between life and death. Haha, <laughs> funny memory, my friend died. And she's part of the murders from 20 years ago. Wow. I was the one who found the hand. <gasps> I'll go first, because I'm a girl boss. Oops. <laughs> I'll go first, because I'm a girl boss. I'll make a guess, because I'm a detective. I can't say it for certain, but... Okay, the suggested dialogue is Mr. Junochu silenced the girl with blackmail. Mr. Junochu silenced Michio with blackmail. What blackmail, though? What if... Mr. Jinochi silenced Mi Michio Shiraishi with blackmail. What do you think? Exactly my thinking. Jinochi knew about Miss Shi Shiraishi's connection to the kidnapping. 
and he used that to blackmail her into doing his bidding. Oh. Okay, that makes sense. He made her feel so trapped, she took her own life to escape. That's my read on it. How despicable. Well, it's just a theory. Right now, I think we need to have another chat with Mr. Genochi. Please, go ahead. Alright then. Okay, so this is where... All the other curse bearers, I saw them. One of them's an old man. There's a couple. Is something wrong? Oh, he's like, it's been 20 years. He's probably out in the street. Sorry, bitch. <laughs> I saw him. Oh. Okay, so either way, I have to end here. That's silly. Oh, was that the television static? Okay, well, huh. I guess we're gonna be hopping back and forth then. Hmm. Okay, because my plan was to do like one, I thought it was like linear stories throughout. My plan was to do one story like a day, or one character perspective a day, but I guess it won't be like that. We're gonna have to hop back and forth, so. Hmm. Interesting. Let's continue Tetsuo, or let's start Tetsuo Tsutsumi's path. Crime Scene Investigation Tetsuo Tsutsumi. Tetsuo Tsutsumi, Chief Inspector of the Metropolitan Police Department, 1st Investigative Division, is investigating the mysterious death of a fellow officer. He visits the scene of the incident, the former Yasuda Gardens, with his subordinate, Jun Erio. Let's get started. <laughs> Tetsuo Tsutsumi, 11 p.m. Former Yasuda Gardens. Oh my god, I see a person. I saw a person in the background. That's scary. You know what else is scary? Um, watching ad, because guys, we are two hours into stream, so it's time for me to rinse some ads. You can avoid that ad by subscribing for $4.99, just $5. Skip your coffee and get ad free viewing all month long. Or you can link your Amazon Prime to Twitch and hashtag sub for Fee with Prime. Click subscribe, see if you have a Prime sub available. Also, follow the channel if you're new. If you're lurking, click the follow button. It's easy, just one click. <clears throat> hey boss forensics is all done the crime scene is clean the other officers have all gone home it's just us now the park should be able to open up back tomorrow like nothing ever happened I doubt it'll give many visitors after everything that's happened you'd be surprised Lots of people love that kind of thing. I bet they'll be lining up to get in. The cold stuff is pretty popular right now. Did you not know that, boss? Sounds stupid. Well, it's not exactly rooted in science, but... If ghosts really did exist, we could just ask them who the perp is. Somehow, I doubt it'd be that simple. Oh, but you know, I've heard that high school girls are really into that spirit board thing these days. Supposedly, you can call in spirits and talk to them by using a board with letters on it. Wouldn't that be something? You can try it out yourself if you're so interested. Hey, that's not a bad idea. Let's give it a go sometime, boss. What now? Stop messing around. You really think we're going to solve this case by moving a coin across a scrap of paper? Sounds like you know all about it. We're going to be open-minded. What if that's how police work is going to be from now on? Don't make me laugh. Hmm... We have the classic aloof and chipper dynamic. Where are my shippers at? <laughs> Listen up, Eriel. You can't go blaming the death of your buddy on something like the occult. I don't care if it was ghosts or the occult or what. 
Whoever or whatever it was that did this, I'll get them. I promise you that. Well, you've got the right attitude, but we don't even know if this is a murder yet. Bias is weak in our judgment. Get too fixated on one thing and you stop seeing everything else. Aye aye, boss. So, now that we're finished investigating the scene, let's review what we know. Hmm, now? It's getting late. I figured we'd head straight home from here. Come on! We've got to go over all the info we've gathered. And what better place to do that than here at the scene of the crime where we can soak up the atmosphere? Soak up the atmosphere? The hell is there to soak up? You must be really into this occult stuff if you can get off being in a place like this. Wait. Me being somewhere like this doesn't get your blood pumping? No way. No, no. Don't turn this around on me. I'm not the weird one here, creeps. Or crimes. Ah, uh, fine. Let's get this over with. Aye, aye, boss. Look here. Right here. That's probably a tree? No, that's gotta be a person. Look at it. It's like legs and a torso. That- that's a person. Editor, zoom in. <laughs> the former Yasuno Gardens here in Yokami Ichomi was originally built as part of the Daimos estate back in the Edo period. The Park Begum City- Wait. Oh wait. I can't read it. <laughs> the Park Begum City property a number of years ago and underwent ex extensive renovations. There's not a soul around at this time of night. Kawhi doesn't even begin to describe it. That's a person. That's a person! This pond. They say it used to flow into the Sumida River. But the river became so polluted that they cut it off. Ooh, the scene. This is where the victim was found. It's, well, it's clean now. It almost feels like nothing happened here at all. But once an incident like this has come to pass, there's no going back. Not knowing that is any is, is any. Not that knowing that is any consolation. Dude, why are we here by ourselves? It's so creepy. Okay, I think I've seen everything in the background. Jun Erio, a detective in the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department, 1st Investigative Division. His rank is Sergeant. This is his first time leading a case. It's like he's graduated from rookie to newbie. He looks put together on the outside, but acts like a kid most of the time. Honestly, the force could use more people like him. Oh, he's into it? Shippers? So, early in the morning yesterday, a staff member found the victim collapsed here in the park and called the police when they realized he was dead. While there was no obvious external wounds, the fact that he was a police officer and the evidence of a struggle means it was likely that this was a murder. The Sumida office sent it over to us since it involved the death of an officer, and we were tasked with the investigation. What we need to do is figure out what happened and whether there was foul play involved. And I think that about sums things up. But, uh, boss? Yeah? Is this case really important enough to assign to someone from the investigation division? I mean, a friend of mine died, so it's important to me, but... It's all up to the higher-ups. I'm sure they've got their reasons. Boss, you know something, don't you? It'll all become clear in time. Try not to worry about it too much. Thinking about it, the only thing we know for sure is the identity of the victim. That means there must have been something special about him, right? Maybe? Maybe he knew something he wasn't supposed to. Some kind of secret or something. 
Isn't that right? You're pretty sharp sometimes, you know that? If you picked up onto that, you should be able to put the rest together yourself. Hmm. Well, it is our duty to get to the bottom of a suspicious death, especially one involving an officer. The victim is Hajime Yoshimi, of the Juvenile Division of the Sumida City Community Safety Bureau. 27 years old, single. He mostly dealt with cases involving juveniles in education. His rank was Senior Police Officer. You know him well, don't you? What was he like? Yes, we were in the academy together. We still went out for drinks together every month or two. He could be a little rowdy, but he was a little... He was like a big brother to us all. He was kind and cared about his friends. For better or worse, he wasn't the uptight type of cop. The man always showed empathy, and I heard he was popular with the locals for it. He treated each and every troubled kid he met with compassion. He had a great track record when it came to rehabilitation. Sounds like we lost a good one. Yes, we did. We truly did. I know being a cop was dangerous. I knew something like this could happen, but... It's never easy when it happens for real. I know the feeling. He didn't seem to care much about climbing the ranks, but he was at top of our class. Only problem was that he took on so much. He had the most unfinished paperwork, too. I always felt we'd need an unusual guy like him to help us solve all the unusual cases. Hmm. Don't worry. You're plenty unusual yourself. Me? I was the most normal of all my classmates. Besides... The real weirdo among us quit the academy a long time ago. There was one even weirder than you. Hmm, it seems like there's bad blood. Hajime was quite the bad boy in school, apparently. He ended up with the police a lot. He said the officer in charge was good to him, helped him get back on track. The reason he wanted to become a cop was to pay him his kindness forward. Said it was the first time he ever took his studies seriously. That's a good story. Love that kind of thing. Makes me want to have a drink in his honor. Please don't make fun of my dead friend. Hey, I said in his honor. You should aspire to become the kind of cop people miss when they die in the field. You say that like it's a for sure thing I'll die. Besides, if I end up biting it, I'm sure you'll be the one who misses me most, boss. Huh? Come on, don't be like that. You'll hurt morale. Well... I guess how much I'll miss you depends on how this investigation goes. I can already see it. Adio! No! Why'd you have to go and get yourself killed? I have no idea what's going on in that head of yours. Yeah, that'll be a sight to see. I can't wait. You can't wait for your own death. Get it together, kid. Sheesh. You really are something. Sheesh! <laughs> Thank you? What about the victim's family? The Yoshima family is from Kitasenju in Araja City, but Hajima's parents died a long time ago. He lived there all alone, no siblings or anything. I went to his house a few times for drinks. I was surprised. It's this huge, old-looking place. Like, you know, the kind of place that seems super haunted. And he lived there alone. It looked like the home of an old noble family. It was hard to imagine him being such a delinquent living in a house like that. There's that bias I was talking about. If he's from an old family, I'm sure things were complicated. That's a bias, too. He never talked about any of that, even when we were drunk, so I don't know much about it. Hmm. Oh, one more thing. Yeah? Hajime was engaged. He's been seeing his fiance ever since they were in school. Over ten years. They just started talking about getting married. What was her name again? He showed me a picture once. She was a beautiful woman. That's so. How terrible for her. But she may know if there's been anything going on with him lately. We should speak to her. Yeah. His fiancé may have been his only confidant. I'm sure someone at the Sumida Police Department has already contacted her. I'll look into it tomorrow. Hmm. 
Hmm. So. Edio was not trying to bang Hajime. <laughs> Hi, Mac. Welcome in. Can we get some yos? Hello. Hey boss, I looked into the case that Hajime was running. Oh great, that's the kind of stuff I want to know. What was Hajime working on the day he died? Well, according to his report from the day before, he had two cases involving juveniles. Uh-huh. The first was the unaliving of a high school girl who jumped off a building in Kamazawa last week. Oh yeah, I did hear about that guy. I did hear about that. Oh, um, blood. Fake. The girl's name was Mochiko Shiraishi. She was a second year student at Komagata High School. But it seems as though Hajime had had contact with her even before this incident. Hmm. So she'd been troubled for some time. That's the thing. About a month ago, he happened to see her walking around town. She looked upset, so he struck up a conversation with her. He was sure there was something bothering her. But she wouldn't tell him what. Must have been trouble at home. That's what he thought too. It seems he visited her home and spoke to her parents, but... They said there was no problem. So there was nothing he else he could do. And now she's dead. Hmm. That it's possible he could have prevented her unaliving then. He must have been devastated. And that's why he was looking into this Michio Shiraishi again. He must have thought that something terrible had happened that drove her to end her life. But ultimately, he never reported the findings of his investigation. I see. And you're thinking that it may have had something to do with his death. We'll have to find out what it is Hajime discovered. But right. Let's check with the Sumida Police Department about that tomorrow, too. Who's that guy? He's a detective. We saw him yesterday in the park with Shoujo, and we, like, eavesdropped. Because I assume the way this game is going to go, since there's, like, not linear perspectives between the four different routes, like, they're just going to keep jumping back and forth. So even if you, like, miss a little bit, you can kind of put the pieces together, in my opinion. Man, there's so much dialogue. Oh my god. I would hate to be a detective. And what was the other case he was working? This one is also related to the Komagata High student. A troublemaker named Hitomi Okuda. She seems to be the leader of a group of kids who get up to no good. Hmm. Juvenile delinquency. Fun. She was pretty bad for a while. Multiple charges of destruction of property, assault, and battery, you name it. Hajime had been working with her for about six months, and she finally started to open up. Then he met with the girl the day he died. Well, every school's got its problems. But I'm sure he'd be worried about how she'd get on without him. Right, just when she'd finally found an adult she could trust. She might act out, with so she might act out without someone to help her get through this. We'll have to make sure the Sumida Community Safety Bureau does their job. But... Hmm? We can't rule out the possibility that meeting with this delinquent girl had something to do with his death. Then we'll have to interview her, too. Ah, yes, you're right. She may have been the last person to see him alive, after all. I'll ask Sumida to introduce us tomorrow. Though, who knows if they'll actually let us talk with her. That's what we hired you for. Lay a little boyish charm on them if you need convincing. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm sure they prefer me over a scary-looking old man like you, boss. Watch it. I'm still your superior. You ought to act like you respect me, at least. Oh. I thought I was... You were? Shit. Is that how your generation speaks? You really are a new breed. Frickin' Zoomer detectives, am I right? just me actually oh uh, well 
don't think you can get away with that with other people. So, anyways, boss. We're even listening. We've got a quite... We've got quite a bit to look into tomorrow. First, the two Komagata high school cases that Hajimo's handling. And we need to speak with his fiancée as well. I believe that's it for tomorrow. Man, we got a lot to do. Detective's a hard job. As for the cause of death... We won't know until the autopsy is done. From what we've seen, though, it appeared to be some kind of acute heart failure. And since he had no record of chronic illness and had no visible wounds, it's possible that poison or drugs could have been involved. <gasps> Drugos. Dying in the middle of the park like that. It certainly seems suspicious. We found signs of a struggle at the scene, as well as footprints belonging to an unidentified individual. We've got people trying to identify those prints. If we can find who they belong to, we might be able to figure this whole thing out. Yes, wouldn't it be nice if that were the end of it? The only things Hajime had on him were his badge and his wallet and his pockets. So we can rule out mugging. Though there probably are many people who try to... Tr Though there aren't... <laughs> Though there probably are many people who try to think... Mugging a cop as big as him. I've also heard that Hajime got into a fair few fights in his younger days. He started judo once he became an officer and rose up the ranks quickly. Sounds like the perp would have had to have been pretty strong to take on Hajime. Hmm, I think it was the occult. Time of death was around 11 p.m. two days ago. Outside of the park's operating hours, of course. His body was found early in the morning yesterday. 11 p.m. the day before yesterday. What was Hajime doing out here at that time in the first place? That's the question, isn't it? The entrance to the park is closed after hours, but it's a small gate that'd be fairly easy for him to get through if he really wanted to. That would, of course, be breaking and entering, but... What do you think, boss? Someone called him here, obviously. It's hard to imagine a cop like Hajime who would trespass for no reason. And since it seems like someone else was here with him, could they have called him here? Oh, that does seem likely. They must have been talking about something pretty sensitive to come here in the middle of the night. So Hajime met someone here to discuss something in secret. And then they got into a fight? No, that wouldn't match the cause of death. There would be no- <clears throat> I hate doing this deeper voice. It ruins my throat. And then my day. <clears throat> no, that wouldn't match the cause of death. There were no wounds on the body that would indicate a spontaneous scuffle. The perp must have planned something. Then you think it was meditated? Or <laughs> meditated. Wait, medi meditated? Meditate? Wait, like meditate? Like. <laughs> Premeditated. Oh, like pre. Never mind. Then you think it was meditated? That would mean. They called Hajime to the park with the intent to kill him? Well, there is still the possibility that it was just some kind of accident. Maybe the perp tried to threaten Hajime. And things went south from there. We should be able to get a clearer picture once we know exactly what killed him. Right. But either way, I'm so glad you're back in the first division, boss. I've always admired your work. You were like a god to me. You were the whole reason I became a detective. You were the whole reason I became a detective in the first place. Ah, uh, yeah. About that. People have been saying that ever since you first entered the academy, but... Yes, that's because it's true. <laughs> Why am I making him sound so extra? <laughs> <clears throat> I 
I couldn't believe you got transferred out of the first just as I was assigned to it. So getting to work a case like this now, just the two of us, is a dream come true. Happy as I am to hear that, um... Well, how should I put it? Well, what is it? If that's true, I'm not sure you've been showing me the appropriate amount of respect. Huh? But I do respect you. Don't tell me you're getting senile, boss. That's exactly what I'm talking about. When you run your mouth like that. It's getting late. You must be getting sleepy. Don't worry, boss. I'll make sure we get out of here soon. Yeah, yeah. I get it. No, just let him be a little bit chipper. He's a little zoomer cop. I've been wowed by your shrewd detecting abilities all day today, too. Oh, really? Funny. I've been wowed by you, too. Are they flirting? I love this storyline. <laughs> On the topic of family... Oh, what's yours like, boss? The hell is wrong with you? Prying into my personal life all of a sudden? It's just... I've never heard you talk about them or anything. Oh, are you single? Shut it. That's none of your business. Well, ever since I joined the force, I've been thinking... We should go on a date. <laughs> the department really pressures young officers to get married. I wonder where that is. You don't say anything like that, though. How should I know? I came to the pressure myself and got married 20-some years ago. Huh. So then... God, you're relentless. She took our daughter and left four years ago. Thanks for reminding me, jackass. Oh. I'm sorry. I can't believe she'd give up on a guy like you. I think you're very cute. Eh. I was never home much. Too focused on work. I'd come home late only to get called right back out again. Plus, being a cop is dangerous work. I don't blame her for getting fed up with it all. How sad. Especially when you're out here putting your life on the line. Oh, is that why you transferred out of the first? It was already too late by then. You better be careful, Ariel. You say that, but there's not much I can do, is there? That's the nature of the job. There are many who can really understand it. Not unless they're involved with police work themselves, or related to someone who is. But wait, you have a daughter, boss? You really think I want to talk about her? After all that, have some sense. Come on, I promise I didn't mean it that way, it sounds. But how old is she? Is she 20? If I can't date you, can I date your daughter? <laughs> Jeez, you don't know when to quit, do you? At least try not to look so intrigued. Jeez, well, a bit rough around the edges. I think most men are intimidated by her. Last I heard, she's living by herself and going to college. Wow, a college student. Men love an educated lady. Stop that. What kind of cop are you making very slow assumptions like that? She's living on her own, though. You must worry about her. Worry? I don't even know where she lives. Oh. So she hasn't told you. Probably because she knows you'd follow her around everywhere. I would not. I don't think. Come on now, we both know that's not true. Listen here, kid. You may look like a mean old man, but you sure have a soft side. What? Is that supposed to be a compliment? I can't keep up with you little zoomers. We're done talking about this. I think Eddie is trying to smash. <laughs> Do you think he's in type one? Uh oh. 
If you got married 20 years ago, it must have been right around the time of the Nejima murder. You know your history. Yeah, that happened a year or two after our wedding. You were the one who arrested the killer, weren't you? We studied that case at the academy. I was only in elementary school at the time, but I still remember people talking about some dangerous criminal getting arrested. All that was just... Racking the case. Finding the guy. It was all just happenstance. I'd rather not think about it all. It was a disturbing case. It did not make your skin crawl when you learned about it at the academy. It did. We were all terrified. Sounds about right. No one could believe that such a mild-mannered man could have committed such terrible murder. If we had overlooked one little thing, we may... may Oh, why is it panning to the trees? There's someone in the tree. There's gotta be. If we had overlooked one little thing, we may, we may never have caught him at all. I think I remember hearing there was only one charge that brought against him in the end. That's right. We didn't have the evidence. I know there was no way such a meticulously planned crime could have been there first, but... We may have struck... We may have stuck Fumichika Nijima in a cell, but it was no victory. He always had the upper hand. And all the damage he did to everyone involved, especially the victim's classmates. It had already been 20 years, huh? God damn it. This is why I try not to think about it. I'm sorry. Yeah, 20 years means he's eligible for a parole. He's out on the streets again. Ooh, about the occult. So, all this occult stuff, have you heard about it, boss? What are you talking about? The right, this right of resurrection thing that everyone's talking about. No, not you too. I've been hearing about that shit everywhere. Oh, you have? That's surprising. Who cares what people are talking about? It's got nothing to do with our job. But, don't you think the occult stuff with this case feels, I don't know, realer somehow? The whole thing started right here in Honjo in Sumida City. So, I thought that maybe... Cut it out. Nothing good can come out of getting involved with that right of whatever or that record of fates. Sounds like you know all about it. Boss, are you secretly into the occult? Stop that. Seriously. This isn't a joke. I get why you'd be intrigued by something called the Rite of Resurrection after a buddy of yours died, but... Bringing the dead back to life, that's the stuff of fantasy. It's not real. So don't go hoping for miracles. Got it? Well, boss, I think that about does it. Right, let's call it for tonight. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh no, am I gonna get cursed? Oh god, what is that? Huh, boss? What's wrong? Don't tell me you're going senile. Oh, he must not see it. Ooh, damn it. It was that case after all. Boss? What is it? Is there something over there? Ah. Okay, so if the person can see... Oh, oops, I missed the dialogue, sorry. <laughs> Kill them! Kill those who spread lies! Kill them all! You have acquired the power of the cursed stone, the Evergreen Beach. You can use it to kill those who intentionally try to mislead you. Press the curse button when someone lies to you. Okay, so since I got possessed, that means I had something in me that made me, like, easier to possess. I must be haunted or something. Ugh. A murderous impulse seeps into my soul like thick black tar. Can you hear 
Tyrant Curse Bearer. He who so strongly desires the right. Kill him. Boss? Boss! Boss, what's the matter? Don't tell me you really went senile. Sorry. I'm fine. How do you? Yes? I have some bad news. Oh no, your senility is kicking in, isn't it? No. We've got a bit of trouble on our hands. Looks like we'll be working some overtime. We're not going home tonight. Huh? What are you talking about? <clears throat> the Hunt for the Curse Bearers Part 1 Tetsuo Tsutsumi Tsutsumi and Jun are sorting through the facts at the scene of Officer, of Officer Hajime Yoshimi's mysterious death. Tsutsumi denies the existence of the Rider Resurrection until the cursed echo of the Evergreen Beach didn't, appears before them. Oh, it's because he, he lied and he said it wasn't real, so that's why the spirit showed up. That's probably, I think that's it. Because he, he, it didn't show up until I said it wasn't real. Hmm. Peace, I too. Hmm. Also, guys, we are another 30 minutes in the stream, so if you're newer, follow. You get cool emotes and you get to type in chat. Wow. Wow. Guys, can we hit our daily goal? <clears throat> also, I got a text from my sister. Hold. <clears throat> okay, I'm ready to start. Tetsuo Sutsumi, 12 a.m. Former Yasuda Gardens. Okay, so let me get this straight, boss. The right of resurrection really exists, and to use it, you have to kill people using the power of curses from the seven mysteries of Honjo. And the curse you have is from the story of the Evergreen Beach that's told in this area. Is that right? Yeah, pretty much. You're quick on the uptake. You weren't your usual silly self when you were explaining, so I knew you were telling the truth. I'm never silly. The only thing I have trouble believing is that you're taking this occult stuff seriously now. I mean, talk about paranormal. I thought you didn't believe in any of that. It's not that I don't believe in it. My familiarity with it is why I've tried not to get too close. Are you... Just being a sore loser? Not used to admitting you were wrong? Oh, shut up and listen to me. No point in trying to hide things anymore. We won't get anywhere if you don't understand this. So listen up. Please, just listen. You don't have to keep saying it. I'm listening. We don't have time to waste. We'll talk as we walk. Hey, wait for me, boss. <laughs> what is this like? Rhyme time. <laughs> Comedy background music. <laughs> To Origoku Bridge, we go.
Oh, it's still going. Okay. <laughs> um, sorry. I just want to double check on one thing. You're telling the truth, right? This isn't a side effect of your senility? It's the truth. Not like I can prove it, though. He's not stupid, but he sure can be slow sometimes. Though I think that positivity of his may come in handy at some point. I'm sure you already know this, but this is all top secret. No sharing it with anyone. But right, you can trust me not to. But, no, I just can't believe it. I've heard rumors that I used to be a member of the secret division attached to the security bureau. I can't believe we actually have a department called Paranormal Affairs. Yeah, I'm sure it comes as a shock. I couldn't believe it myself. I thought the higher-ups were messing with me. Really had me worried for a while there. No, this is incredible. That the whole reason I became a cop, I was always fascinated by secret agencies and stuff. You serious? But thinking about it, it totally makes sense. If curses and spirits really do exist, then of course we need a special department to protect citizens from them. You seem a bit too eager to believe all of this. And hang on, I thought you joined up because of me. Come on, boss. Do you only have one favorite food? You can like more than one thing. Oh my god, buy pride, guys. He said it. Yeah, yeah, whatever. In any case, the official stance is that the supernatural doesn't exist, so paranormal affairs operates in secret. Still not sure why they stuck me there. Those four years, I worked nothing but at cases involving the supernatural. Hmm. Seems like something tagged along in one of your investigations, man. So, do you, you know, have it? Have what? Spirit sense, of course. Are you what they call spiritually gifted? Nope. I've never felt anything at all. Even if I did, I'd be a lightweight at best. One beer and I'm down for the count. Oh. Huh. Is that how people in the field quantify someone's spirit sense? Like how much liquor they can handle? Nope. That's just me. Thought it'd help get the point across. Hmm. Yoko used the same analogy. Oh. Huh. Sorry. Seems like I keep disappointing you. No, it's not your fault, boss. At the risk of disappointing you yet again, I'll tell you one more thing. Spirit sense is usually something you're born with. It's tough to develop it later on. What? So there's no hope for me? No, say it isn't so. Of course you were interested. Well, you never know. You may have some hidden potential. I know there's a... I know there's a high schooler who's got so much spirit sense that she works on the front lines. I say work. But she wasn't paid because it was supposedly part of her training. Yikes. That seems like it would be a violation of Article 69 of the Labor Standards Act. Well... You really know the law, don't you? No comment. Even the occult field has workers' rights issues, huh? Hey, Gab. <laughs> so, what do we do now? We got this right of resurrection and the cursed echoes of the seven mysteries of Honjo. The curses being spread out around the city is, um, a bit of an emergency. It's that bad? I'll put it this way. It's like handing out guns all over town. Jeez, that's real bad! It is. So we need to find the source and put a stop to it before something terrible happens. Usually that'd be a job for the paranormal affairs, but... I talked to them on the way here. 
The main team is tied up until tomorrow morning. So they told me to deal with it myself. So it'll be fine since I have some experience. Huh? What? Then, that overtime you mentioned means... Yep. You're gonna help me, partner. Alright, let's do this! You seem a bit too eager to dive into all this. You really have no reservations working a case you know nothing about. You said it was an emergency. I didn't think we had a choice. I'm just trying to be logical about this, boss. You really are something. It might actually be nice having you around. Oh, I uh, thank you. So, what exactly do we do? If these curses are connected to the seven mysteries, then the people who have the others should all be here in town. Right. If there's seven of them, that means there are six more out there. And we have to stop them all before they kill anyone with their curses. If we can, we should find and collect all the curse stones. But, boss, from what you said earlier, killing a curse bearer gets you closer to completing the Rite of Resurrection. Won't your life be in danger if they find out you're a curse bearer? Pretty much. We can't let that happen. Should you even be out here right now? Hiding would only be a waste of time. The mystery of the one-sided reed is associated with the Rigoku Bridge. I was hoping we'd be quick enough to run into the one-sided reed curses bearer. No such luck, it seems. Well, if nothing else, maybe word will spread that the cops are on the lookout and people would behave. That's putting a lot of trust into whoever those people are. But... It's possible that other curse bearers will have the same idea will come here. Talk to anyone you see who seems suspicious. Ah, oh, that means someone who may have the power of a curse. Understood. In that case... Why don't you ask that guy who's been watching us this whole time? Okay, he was not in the background when I did the 360. What do you know? There is someone there. Good luck. Hey! You there! Sorry to bother you, but I've got some questions. I'm with the police. Hey, it's this kiddo. Thanks for the cooperation. We'll be asking you a few things, Mr... Yotaro Namigaki. That's your name, correct? Um, yes. I don't mind answering your questions. You're a detective. Did something happen? Oh, right. Lots of things have been happening around here. Like people dying. Okay, this kid's a psycho. Boss, let's talk to this guy. If this were a normal case, I'd be fine letting him take the reins. But curses are involved here. I should take over. This man identifies himself as Yutaro Namigaki, a 21-year-old college student. He was watching us so calmly, we need to be careful with this guy. Wait, 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 wait. If someone has like a high spirit sense, then they can see like the other curse bearers soul echo. Like how um Sujio saw this kiddo's so curse echo. Soul echo. Curse echo. I don't know the terminology. So how can we not- how can we not see his? So, what is it you're doing here? Ah, it must be the incident at the former Yasuda Gardens. The dead policeman? I can't imagine a detective would come all the way out here otherwise. Huh? Say, Mr. Detective, have you ever heard of the Evergreen Beach? Hmm. Okay, okay. 
We have to make the college kid think we're not a curse bear. So we have to be clueless. Answer my question, bucko. How about you answer my question first? What are you doing here? I was answering your question. I came here to look for the evergreen beach from the Seven Mysteries of Honjo. Actually, I was wondering if either of you knew anything about it. Nope. Sorry. Really? How strange. Detectives. Detectives, you have the cursed stone of the Evergreen Beach, don't you? You. How did you know? Anyhow, you idiot. <laughs> well, that was much easier than expected. Oh, crap. Sorry. It was simple inference. I figured you would have taken the curse if you were just in the gardens. If you know that, then... You must be a curse bearer yourself. I have no intentions of hiding anything. I plan to tell you from the start. Look. This is my curse stone. I believe it's called the Foot Washing Mansion. That's right. But are you sure about this? I'm not so rash that I'd kill someone as soon as I found out they were a curse bearer. Not without talking to them first. You're the same, aren't you, detectives? You wouldn't use a curse on a normal person. Let's speak as equals, shall we? Boss? Sure. We'd rather resolve this amicably, too. Hmm. I wonder if I would have murked him there. Because Su Sugio's storyline is already done. Because if I, if I killed this kid here, then Sugio would not... I don't think it would have let me. And also, in um, Sugio's route, anytime there was the option to murk people, I didn't press anything. But it still, like, murked people. I think the detective is, like, ha has too strong a resolve to give in to the curse. Also, the kid... The curse only comes up when somebody tries to lie or misdirect me. Which, this kid is being very honest. Granted, he's being kind of sly about it, but he's still being honest. So why did my curse come up there? That doesn't seem right. But before we talk, there's something I should tell you. Hmm? This is my curse stone. The Evergreen Beach, just like you thought. What? What? Boss, why'd, why'd you tell him? As for how the curse works... Boss, are you having another senior moment? If you tell him that... It hangs to death anyone who would try to mislead me. So, if you try to lie to me, the Cursed Stone will let me know. I don't have to use it to tell. Understand? Whoa, really? That's super useful! I see. Understood. That's a pretty useful tower. That's a pretty useful power for a detective. Now then, let's talk. Damn, it seems I've lost the upper hand. No point for petty tricks then. I'll be honest with you. So far, so good. Why does he keep coming up if supposedly he's not lying? There's someone I want to bring back. So, I'd like your assistance in collecting soul drags. Can't help you. Please, all you have to do is tell me who the other curse bearers are. Sorry. But as a police officer, I can't just look the other way and let you go. Please, if you help me, I'll let you two go as well. Is that a threat? No. It's your final warning. Ugh. My curse. The foot washing mansion. Did you really think you could escape it just by being careful? It doesn't matter to me which of you was the curse bearer. I'll be taking both of your soul dregs anyway. Oh wait! Namagaki! 
The foot washing mansion is a powerful curse. It is so simple to activate. It is ready whenever I need it. There's no escape from the voice of my feet. Adio, get out of here. Hurry. I'll find you later. Who? what? Okay. Too late. Hear the voice of my curse echo. Huh. The voice of his curse echo? Ah, this voice. This is... Tetsuo Tsutsumi, deceased. The old man is back! First time today, my first game over. My, my, Pison. You seem to have arrived at a less than favorable result. This is mere conjecture on my part, but... I believe you may be aware of a way... I believe you may be aware of a way to escape Yotaro's curse. Fair not. You may make as many attempts as you please from this point. Yotaro uses his curse. I'm gonna try again. I know what to do. Very well. All I gotta do is mute the sound. Oh! Oh my god. <laughs> okay, it went back into it. Okay. I can't hear little voices. I'm just emote spamming every once in a while. Don't worry, bud. I mean, this is a very, like, audio-heavy stream, so this is a good one to lurk in. Also, I'm probably going to stream for, like, an hour or more, because it's generally hurting my throat. Okay, sound is muted. Ugh. My curse. The foot washing mansion. Did you really think you could escape it by just being careful? It didn't matter to me which of you was the curse bearer. I'll be taking both of your soul drags anyway. Wait. Namagaki. The foot washing mansion is a powerful curse and so simple to activate. It is ready whenever I need it. There's no escape from the voice of my feet. Edio, get out of here. Hurry. I'll find you later. What? Okay. Too late. Hear the voice of my curse echo. The voice of the curse echo. What? Why is it my curse echo working? Impossible. This has never happened. What's happening? I don't hear anything. Eddie, now. Grab him. Right. Namagaki, get down! Ah, uh, damn it! Boss, here, his curse stone. Good work. Give it to me. Wait. Curse stone acquired. The foot washing mansion. Okay, so this was at midnight. This was before he ran into Sugyo. Hmm. Damn it! Why? Oh, why do you think, boss? Or what do you think, boss? Should we lock him up? I haven't even touched you. You can't consider the. <clears throat> you can't consider that assault of a police officer. Let him go. All we need is the stone. Ah, how could this happen? My right of resurrection. Give it up. The right was too good to be true from the start. I don't know what happened to you. But you'd be better off mourning whoever you lost the right way. Now get out of here. Damn it. Phew. That was a close one, huh, boss? We'd probably be dead if he had activated his curse. Yeah. I'm not sure what, but something stopped him from... Huh. Boss? Are you okay? Does having another curse stone hurt? Yeah. The curse from this one is flowing into me, too. Oh, no. I saw what activates the curse of the food washing mansion. And the resentful memory is bound to it. Ah, uh, I see. I always thought this one was one of the stranger of the seven mysteries. Now I know why. 
This sure is something. Ooh, what did you see? Let's save that for later. All you need to know from now is that it's a particularly powerful curse. We're lucky we took it from him quickly. Phew. Hmm. Now that bozo is curseless. Well, that makes one stone. Ooh, where do we go now? We'll visit all the places associated with the mysteries while it's still dark out. You mean, we have to do that all over again? I hope they aren't all as aggressive as him, but... People will do crazy things to bring back someone they love. It seems that the hatred the cursed stones are, are imbued with makes people more willing to kill. Really? Then, what about you, boss? I'm fine. I may not have any spirit sense, but in, I'm tough when it comes to this stuff. That's why they loved me in paranormal affairs. So, you are spiritually gifted after all. Alright, let's head to the next place. Hmm. I now have two curses on my belt. The Hunt for the Cursed Bearers Part 2 Satsumi and Edio decided to collect the cursed stones as soon as possible, before they became the cause of an unprecedented tragedy. The two obtained the foot-washing mansion from Yutaro Namagaki and head to their next destination. So, now we're in the park. Hmm. Also, my sister texted me, I gotta answer. Let us begin. Miedoricho Park. Tatsuo Sutsumi, 1 a.m. Miedoricho Park. Excuse me. Sorry to bother you, but we have some questions for you. Araishi. What? Are you with the police? I haven't done anything. Don't worry. This isn't an interrogation or anything. We just want to talk. You're Hideki Araishi, right? The historian? We know who you are, so this won't take long. But since we saw you here, we'd just like to ask you a couple questions. Local history researcher, Hiraki Araishi. Well, let's get it over with. I'm a busy man. Yeah, I don't see any people in the background. I think we're safe. Questioning people like this can put unnecessary stress on them depending on their position. This guy is pretty sharp. I'll have to play it safe and only push him when I see an opening. Boss, let's ask Hideki for... Let's ask Hideki some questions. From appearances, it's hard to imagine this small, bookish, well-spoken man being very dangerous. But in this day and age, you never know. I should be careful. Now, Mr. Araishi, what were you doing here at this time of night? Doing research, of course. Day or night, information never sleeps. 
That's admirable philosophy. You know, your research has been quite the talk around town. What was it they were saying? You discovered something about some book? The Record of Fates. Alright. You found some kind of ritual in the Record of Fates. What? Don't tell me you want to know how to carry out the Rite of Resurrection too. To be perfectly honest, I'm tired of people asking me about it all the time. None of you even care about the local history. You just... You just come crawling out of the woodwork when something interesting comes up. Looks like I hit a nerve. If you think you can force me to tell you because you're a policeman, you're solely mistaken. Was the research you were doing just now also related to the Rite of Resurrection? Well, yes, that's right. What exactly were you looking for? I... I have no reason to tell you that. You wouldn't understand anyway. Okay, that was the same dialogue. Are you doing all this research so you can use the Rite of Resurrection yourself? Huh. You're a policeman. Do you really think police can be brought back to life? Or people can be brought back to life? <laughs> Everyone I meet. Pitiful. Huh. So you don't believe in the right? Whether it's real or not has nothing to do with my research. Such things are better left to the occult freaks. Or so I thought. Huh? Things changed. It has become necessary for me to pursue the right. So now, I just pray that it is real. What changed? I'm sure you can imagine. The funds for my research. I receive a large amount of funding for seeking the right of resurrection. And if I find it, I'll receive a sum so great that I'll never have to worry about money again. Uh huh. Then that means someone is sponsoring your research. Is that right? So, what if they are? You have no idea how hard we work to secure funding for our research. I have no interest in teaching those children. Listen to me. I'll tell you one thing. Those experts you see writing provocative books or sprouting nonsense on TV to try and get popular, all of them are just trying to get the money they need to do their research. With how popular the occult is, saying something even remotely spooky can lead to big money. What? Oh, but I bought your book! The, the pursuit of the unknown begins first and foremost with belief. I was so inspired by that bit. I do appreciate your patronage, unfortunately. However, the occult is not my true interest. The fate of the unknown is to be destroyed by thorough research and deep consideration. No way. I can't believe it. You're surprisingly innocent. You know what else is surprising? Um... And... Because guys, we are three hours into stream, so it's time for me to run some ads. You can avoid that ad by subscribing. For $4.99, just $5. Skip your coffee and get ad free viewing all month long. Or... You can link Amazon Prime to Twitch and hashtag sub for free with Prime. Click subscribe to see if you have a Prime sub available. Smile. Okay, I think today I will finish out this section. The part two of searching for curse bears. Because my throat hurts. Just a tiny bit. This record of fates. Where did you get your hands on it? The storehouse of an old private residence in the city, just as the public was told. I am unable to be more precise due to an agreement with my informant. No leaks? Then what kind of research do you want to be doing? Hmm. I'm sure it wouldn't be interest to you, but to put it simply, the focus of my research is how historical accounts transform into folklore over the years as they are passed down from generation to generation. 
What does that mean? Due to human bias, the account of any event is inevitably changed by the person communicating it. This is not necessarily done with ill intentions. It happens when someone tries to fill in the gaps in a story that lacks detail, or when something's left out or abridged because of the story's length, or when a story twists and shifts as it's spread through oral tradition. Even when two stories are told about the same event, differences in culture or environment affect how it's told, changing its content. Silly little things can turn into terribly mysterious legends. My research is the study of how history, culture, and legend all influence each other. Huh. I see. Take the seven mysteries of Honjo, for example. Why are, there, why are some of the mysteries seemingly about nothing particularly interesting? You'd think stories wouldn't last a decade, let alone hundreds of years. So why? Perhaps putting it that way piques your interest. I admit, I am curious. So that's why you've been researching all this time. Makes sense. As I said, it doesn't matter to me whether the right exists or not. If people in the Edo period believe that was what was written in the Record of Fates was real, that's all I'm interested in. But I have to be realistic. The research I'd like to do is unfortunately not very lucrative. That's why I need to take some risks. Well, in that case, I think I might have a guess as to what it is you're looking for. stones. What? Damn it. If you know about that, then... Calm down. No need to get so defensive. We both want information, right? We don't... Why don't we have a nice, friendly chat? Hmm. You may say that, but I don't trust you. Perhaps you've already learned about curses. Perhaps you want to take my power... away from me. No, that's not true. I almost revealed my hand. I'll say nothing else. Dude, you literally said you have a power. You're so fucking dumb. Sorry, I'll be taking my leave here. Hey, stop! Ah, he's so fast. Sorry, boss. He got away. Incomplete! I messed up. Well, in that case, I think I might have a guess as to what it is you're looking for. The seven mysteries... Okay, that wasn't right either. Okay, I'll still play out the dialogue for the fans. Huh. I'm surprised you know that. There is indeed a theory that the seven mysteries of Honjo began because of the Rite of Resurrection. Well, my theory. Unraveling the seven mysteries may reveal the secret of the Rite. I think quite a few people are looking into the mysteries for that reason. Mirorucho Park is connected to the story of the Taiko of Sugaru, right? That's right. But that isn't the issue at hand. Oh, that was right, okay. Well, in that case, I think I might have a guess that it is what you're looking for. Oh, wait, so that wasn't wrong. Curse stone, scare him away. Soul dregs. What? Damn it, if you know about that, then... Calm down. No need to get so defensive. Show my stone! We both want information, right? Why don't we have a nice, friendly chat? Ugh, a curse stone! You are a curse bearer! A leaf. It is the evergreen beach, then. Yep. 
Will you show me yours? This is mine. The ever-burning lantern. Hmm. Interesting. I'm going to reveal because if he lies, then I can kill him. I'll tell you this for free. The Evergreen Beach comes from a man who was hung for spreading false rumors. But the accusations against him were unfounded, and he died cursing those who deceived him. So, that is the resentful memory held within the Evergreen Beach. The memories of the Seven Mysteries are truly fascinating. If only I could collect them all. Do whatever you want, but you should know something. This stone of mine lets me curse anyone who tries to mislead me. What? But- So don't try and lie to me, I'll know. You would curse a citizen? And you call yourself an officer of the law? That all depends on you. I don't want to use it if I don't have to. What- What is it you want? The curse stones are dangerous. I'd like to confiscate yours. Excuse me, but- But my right- First, let me ask you one thing. You. You haven't used that curse, have you? Uh, no. Of course I haven't. I swear. Oh, he's killed people! I see. Good. Now, why don't you hand over that stone? Unless, you'd rather try using it on me instead. Damn it. I won't give it to you. If I were to say that, what would happen? Would it be a crime? The police are aware of how dangerous the stones are. I could arrest you under Article 1, Section 2 of the Minor Offense Act. Or you hand it over, and all you lose is your secret ability. Think of what would happen to all your research if you were arrested. Fine. You can have the stone. Here. Ooh, plus one! Cursed Stone Acquired. The Ever-Burning Lantern. Good choice. I look forward to seeing your research. I look forward to seeing how your research pans out. Hmm. All right. Would you tell us everything you know about what's been going on? If you help us out, we'll give you the information we've gotten after we solve the case. What do you say? In that case, will you tell me about all the resentful memories of the Seven Mysteries? I believe they are the key to the secret hidden in the Record of Fates. Sure. Well not. I'll learn about them as I collect the curse stones. But thanks to you, we learned a lot from him. I wonder. The mysteries and the right are all public information. He kept everything he knows about the other curse bearers and the source of the curse here hidden. I was hoping he'd at least give us a clue about how to beat these curses. Oh, I see. Then we should be more aggressive next time. Really make them spit it out. And by we, I mean you, boss. I'm guessing he wants to save this curse. He wouldn't have told us anything, no matter what we asked. But now we know where he hangs out. We could always send someone for him, if need be. Right. Got it. I was surprised to hear there was actually nine of the seven mysteries, though. Yeah. That's two extra curse bearers we have to find. We've compensated two, so there are six more. They could be anywhere in this town. We have to find them fast, or they may start using their curses. No. I think we're already too late. Huh? I didn't tell you this, but there were some soul dregs in Namagaki's curse stone. Oh, really? Then he already killed someone with it? It's not much, so it probably wasn't a curse bearer. Shit. Well, we know who did it. We can make arrangements to take him into custody. We have paranormal affairs pick him up tomorrow. For now, we continue our search. Right. On to the next place. We just have to cross them off the list one by one. Oh. But, boss... Hmm? Good to know we can use the Minor Offenses Act to arrest people with curse stones. But why didn't we do that with Nag Namagaki? If we could do that, 
there'd be no need for paranormal affairs. What grounds would a normal detective have to put him under arrest? Oh, right. Yeah, I suppose that's true. Very nice. Okay, so earlier, when the walkthrough said you cannot continue on the path if the next, like, color bubble is static, so that means we can't continue with the detective path. We either have to go back to her path or start the high schooler path. So I think... I think we'll have to start the high schooler path, but I will start it next time because my throat hurts. So, to recap, we got a bit more insight into Harue Shigima's missing son, and then we also know that she found like her friend's cut up hand, so that's probably why she got possessed easier because she had like spirit sense because she witnessed murders 20 years ago. And then the detective. We just know that his partner is trying to rizz him up and trying to smash. <laughs> so we will continue this later. Plan for tomorrow will be Bedazzling a Pumpkin. And then Saturday, NPC stream. Depending on if... Because NPC stream on Saturday will be short, short. I'll probably do it for an hour. I don't know what time, so I have notifications turned on. So maybe after NPC stream, I will continue this game. So maybe Saturday we'll pick this up next. Saturday or Sunday. All my thoughts so far? I like how there's so much more lore now. Now we're actually getting to like the thick of it. I cannot wait to see how it ends. Because in the... In Shogo's route, initially... <clears throat> he was found... He was found dead in the park. And then he was found dead by the river. I was gonna say, maybe in the route where he's found dead in the park, maybe the detective killed him. Like, he had to collect all the stones. This game scares me. Don't worry, don't be scared. It's okay. It's just a game. Pumpkin pie stream is probably gonna be on Monday. Smile. Because I have to buy. I'm gonna go grocery shopping this weekend. So yeah. I like this game a lot. My favorite horror game ever. Okay, everybody, I think we can wrap it up here for today. What, what are the voices I'm doing? So, wait, I should save. We get to do calligraphy. If you use your channel points, I will write your name. Oh, wait, I just realized. The, there's a bar at the top that indicates like the time of the day. So something happens after Shogo dies. Hmm. Maybe the mystery is solved? I don't know. Okay, calligraphy time, everybody. If you want attention, use your channel points. And I will get some music on. scary music find the book
Okay, last name of the day. If you want me to write your name, I gotta do is use your channel points. And last call. Okay, there we go. Last name. Any more redeemers? What Wii games are gonna play next week? Um, no narcs, no leaks either. Cause you know what I've found. I find when I don't tell you guys what I'm gonna do, more people click the notification. <laughs> Because if I spoil too much of my plans, then people aren't surprised. And they don't, like, watch the live as much. Don't Sag, come on! Don't you guys want more chatters? My hair is crazy. Okay. That wraps up stream for today. Thank you guys for watching. I think... I assume we're, like, halfway through. Because I've done about six hours. They said the game is about 12 hours. Hopefully we'll beat this in two more streams. Before I go, make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channels. I have two. YouTube.com slash at peace and 17 and then at peace and 70 clips. Daily YouTube short little clip channel and then weekly stream highlights on the main. Subscribe. Do it. And make sure you are following my offline social media. I have a Twitter, Instagram, and a TikTok. Wow. Wow. Okay, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm gonna be bedazzling a whole pumpkin. Holy moly. Okay. Bye guys, thank you for hanging out. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm not gonna be streaming at 11. I'll probably stream in the afternoon because I'm busy tomorrow morning. Okay? So I'll probably see you maybe two-ish. Maybe, I don't know, bye. Bye, Mac. Are you gonna work? You know, wait, Mac, 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 Mac. You mean like... You mean like this type of work? <laughs> you know, nails. <laughs> Wait. Slay. <laughs> Slay. <laughs> Why are you saying oh? Oh. Okay, bye guys. I'll see you tomorrow. But that's like a whole pumpkin. Hashtag real, hashtag not clickbait. Bye guys. I had fun. I really want to see how this game goes. I like it a lot. I see. I generally see why it's rated 10 out of 10. It's, it's Even if the lore is kind of... A lot of it is lore dumping, but I'm like genuinely interested to see what happens. Okay.